holiday again tomorrow. Just stay tuned and enjoy the best of the new polo family in this 15 countries, 50 teams, 500 athletes, and a total of 188 matches make up this canoe for the family. All are reunited in Quiva, the Portuguese city and host of the 2019 Canoe Polo European Championships. It's crowded at the Shukling Gardens right next to the Mondeg River, which shall be the main stage of the four pitches. All eagerly assist in the opening ceremony where athletes, coaches, and team leaders, and all of the remaining organization are surprised by lots of diversion, including the presence of Fugentina, the Portuguese Canoe Federation mascot. 18 countries all the way across Europe welcome from me to Coimbra. I would like to leave a last word to the protagonists of this event, to wish all the athletes an excellent performance. Thank you all.
depois a ação nos homens séniores, às 11h10 no campeonato no Áustria, Polónia, Portugal.
Good morning and welcome to day three of the European Canoe Polo Championships 2019 from Coimbra in Portugal. Competition organized by the Portuguese Canoe Federation and the European Canoe Association. First game on pitch two this morning is an under 21s game. Group, group stages, second round between Germany and France. Lining up for Germany, we have Helke Vott, Anika Knofel, Hannah Kunz, Nina Haschenberg, Nelle Schmelbach, Lotta Bendig, Jules Schwartz, Catherine Grunwald. And for France, we have Colleen Belcher, Maron Robert, Angel Garcia, Mathilde Benoit, Laura Salio, Camille Meyer, Gail Bale, and Camille Bretiche. These girls, all under 21, our referees for this morning are Marzena Anjak Ginter and David Vigenti. As the game gets underway with that first sprint, France first to the ball, and they do get the, the first sprint. This is a second round game, looking for their seedings for semi-finals at the moment. These two teams, both first and second in their group, equal on points, but Germany just ahead on goal difference. So, first place will cross over to second place from the other group. So, very important game going into the semi-finals later on this morning. And Germany block that ball down, try to pick it up, but it gets away from them. Drop ball then by France, giving possession back to Germany. Germany making their first attack of the game. Long ball up the field there. And the shot's on and in. That's Schwartz from Germany. Making the first goal for the Germany under-21s team this morning. Germany leading. One goal to nil. Just over a minute played. And France take their first shot off the bar and out of play. Giving the ball back to Germany. Goal line throw for Germany. Germany once again attacking. France setting up their zone. But being pushed back by the German attackers. Germany making headway into this area. And a second shot, and again, a second goal. That's Haschenberg for Germany, taking the score to two goals to nil. France looking for the reply here. These players aged between 15 and 21. And a shot there, long shot from out wide by Mayer, but over the top of the bar and out of play, giving possession back to Germany once again. <laughs> Supporters out here for this under 21 game, nice and early this morning. Don't know if you can hear them in the background, they're chanting for their teams. So, Germany bringing that ball up from the back, from the goal line throw. Less than three minutes played and Germany's already ahead. And that's a shot picked up once again by Germany. Kept in play and that's a third goal 
That's Kunz from Germany with the third goal of this game. Three goals scored in just two and a half minutes. French team really need to get something going here. Long shot once again, put over the bar by the German goalkeeper. So this time we're out for a corner. No, my mistake. I'm at the other end of the field. It is a goal throw. Germany just taking their time, bringing the ball up the field, looking for that space. Ball goes into the zone. Shot and saved this time by Robert from uh, France. Ball going out for a corner. Corner to be taken by Hackenberg, being closely marked by Salio. Long ball across the pitch though. French putting pressure on the German team this time and picking up that loose ball. They have a man away down the field, but she has no support at the moment. No support. Ball goes back to Belker. Long shot and that's in the net. So, France with the reply now. One goal to Germany's three. German under 21 women's team, silver medalists at the last European Championships two years ago, while the French team were in fifth place. But changes in the under 21 teams are very frequent as players age out. L mistake there by Germany, giving France that ball back. Garcia just taking it up the pitch. Back now, dropping it back. Pressure on from the German team though. Belka, Robert, and back out. French team taking a bit more time now. And it's another goal to France. Great reply from France. France seemed to have settled into this game now. Just taking a bit more time and getting the composure. Bringing that score back within one. Well, of Germany looking, looking for that shot but blocked down by the defender this time. And Germany out, clock reset. They've taken that shot, so they've got time to build again. Taking the ball right out to halfway, looking to bring it in now. Looking for that shot. And shot comes in from Hackenberg, but not on this time. And a second one off the bar. Kunz just bouncing that shot off the bar, back into play. Goes out for a sideline throw. France with the ball. Can France equalise on this attack? They'll certainly be looking to. That's a long shot. Great block by the German defender, Hackenberg, there. There's a foul right down under the goal there. Holding foul, giving Germany that ball. French team certainly settled in now, keeping this score close. Germany will look to extend their lead on this attack again. Just over three minutes left of this half. 
as the ball goes into the centre. But deflection there. Who's going to pick this one up? Germany have picked up that loose ball. French defence trying to drive these German players out. But there's an illegal tackle in the defensive area. So France have the turnover. Long ball up the pitch there. Bale has a shot. Oh, but it goes out for a corner this time. Well defended by Germany. Garcia to take the corner for France. And there's another foul there, a holding offence. Giving Germany the possession. Timeout, says the referee. And that's a green card to number one from France. First green card of the game. And that's a holding event. So Germany take the ball from just beyond halfway. France coming out to put the pressure on. Once again, hitting the players with the ball, chasing that ball down. Germany just taking their time, passing the ball around. Great save there from Robert. Corner ball to Germany. Schwarz to take for Germany. Timeout says the referee, just getting in, getting the players in position in that corner. Ball to be retaken. Just over one minute left to play of this first half. Germany looking to extend their lead before half time. Taking their time. But holding foul there. Player just hanging onto the ball for more than five seconds. So the ball gets put into the hands of France. France have the rest of the play of this half if they choose to make it work like that. Shot clock is with them. Poor pass there, but managed to rescue that. Salio was the rescuer there, taking the ball back. 30 seconds left in this first half. France just looking for the right shot. 10 seconds left. Can they get a shot away before half time? Ball deflected there. Picked up by France, but too late. So as we go into half time, it is Germany three. France, two. These two groups, top of this group at the moment, looking for semi-final places, but it's who will go through first and who will go through second. As the teams go over to talk to their respective coaches, just like to say thank you to the sponsors of this European Canoe Polo Championships 2019. That is Quimbra City Council, University of Quimbra, Club Flivel de Quimbra, who are the local canoe club, Jogos Santa Casa, Upin Sport, and the Portuguese Institute for Youth and Sport. Germany have had 60% possession throughout the first half of this game with nine shots on goal, seven on target. France, seven shots with four on target. 
And we have only one green card in the first half of this game, and that is to France. We will be back with you very shortly with the second half of this game. Welcome back to the second half of this under-21 women's match between Germany and France. The team's just lining up. And they're underway. So the second half sprint gets underway. Oh, ball bounces out of French hands. And Grunwald picking that up for Germany. Germany leading at the moment, three goals to two. The result of this match will decide who takes the top spot in this group going into the semi-finals later on this morning. Loose ball there, picked up by France. Over to the goalkeeper. Can she keep it in? Oh, blocked down again by Germany, though. And that's a paddle foul to Germany in the French defensive area. They're taking it further out, just taking their time. French had a bit of a shaky start in the first half with Germany scoring three goals. And then they've took the comeback. So they are only one goal behind now. But Germany looking to get ahead again, driving into the French defence. Taking their time. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. What can Germany do with that? And that's a shot from Germany. Grimwall, but saved by Robert. Out for a corner. Robert making some great saves against this German team this morning. Germany just taking their time once again. The shot clock reset after their corner. Bringing that ball up. Players in the French zone there. But no pass, no shot there. Ball comes back out. French working hard in this defensive zone. They have three players across the back and one player in front. Three and one defence. Just trying to close all those gaps, keeping the German players out. Germany come in though. They found some space. There's two of them in that gap. Can they get the shot away? No, it is blocked down. Great work from France, but drop back out straight into the hands of Grimwall, who scores for Germany. Unfortunate there for France. 
Ball's dropping straight back into the hands of the German player. Germany now lead four goals to two. Long shot from France and straight back at them. Robert with a reply from France straight away. Only one goal in it again now. Germany four, France three. And a long shot from Germany. Bounces off the bar, back into play. France pick up that loose ball though. Oh, pressure on the French player there, but giving away a foul, legal kayak tackle. France get the ball and the shot clock reset. France just working the ball around the back. They've one player inside the German zone. She's been driven right back, so don't think the ball's going to come through to her at the moment. Salio working hard, and she's dropped back out to the front of that zone. Ball goes across. Great space there, but a great save by the German keeper, Bendy. Good shot from Belk here, but that was saved. Trying to equalise here. France on the attack. Corner ball for France being taken by a breccia. Oh, long ball, but not picked up. She dropped that, went straight out of the back of her hand. Number eight from France has managed to pick that up. That's Brecher. Seeing the loose ball. German defence driving the French players out, but... Oh! And that's Meyer from France with the goal. Bendig did get her paddles to it, but power on that shot just made it go further back and drop straight into the net. So, France four, Germany four. <laughs> Referees calling, holding foul, asking the player just to come over. That's number five from France, Salio. Speaking to the referee. So, German ball, just outside the six meter, ball in, and a shot, but deflected down. France with the attack now. Looking for a pass, nobody there, just recycling the ball to the back. Yeah. Keeping the ball safe, Germany just pushing out to the player with the ball. Putting pressure on where they can. Oh, and the ball's not picked up there, but Robert making sure for France that she has got her hands on it. Picking up that loose ball, making it safe. Shot clock's just ticking down. Only 15 seconds left on that shot clock. But that is a shot way, way too high. No composure there. She needed to stop and think a little bit. So Germany have the attack now. Goalkeeper Bendik just taking that ball from the goal line.
Some great skill with both these teams, both experienced teams. Have a lot of support from their nations, France and Germany. Always done well around the Canoe Polo Championships. Under 21 Polo has been supported from both of these nations right from the start of the competitions in the European and World stage. So Germany corner, Schmalenbach to take the corner for Germany. Long ball out, bit too long, but she has got her hands on that. France putting a bit more pressure on the German team. And that's a shot from Germany, bounces off the top bar and out of play for a sideline throw to France. Four goals each, two and a half minutes to play. Winner of this game will go through top of this group. At the moment, Germany will go through on goal difference if it stays as a draw. So France looking for the shot. And that's number three, fantastic shot there from Garcia. Garcia taking the French team ahead. Great work there. Two minutes left to play. Everything, everything can change in two minutes. As we've seen, these shots going in either end of this, this pitch within seconds of each other. So have Germany got the reply that they had earlier? We shall see. And that's a paddle foul. So Germany have the shot clock reset to 60 seconds. Timeout, says the referee. Player being called over. That's the French player. I believe that was Mayer. So Germany start their 60 seconds, minute and a half left to play of this game. Have Germany got the reply? And a shot, but blocked down by the keeper this time, picked up by, by the German player. And into the center, they're looking for a shot. Well saved, fantastic save from Robert there. But down it comes and back into the hands of Germany who Belker has scored that goal for Germany. The equaliser once again. Okay, one minute left. Pressure coming from Germany now on the French team. They're pushing out a little bit further. As the ball goes back, they have dropped back into their zone. France looking to attack. And a shot from France, out for a corner. Great save by the keeper. Ben Dix done some great work, but Belcare from France to take the corner. 26 seconds left. All the play, all the shot clock for France at the moment. What can they do with it? Oh, and it goes wide. Deflected by the German keeper once again. 10 seconds left. Long ball out. Shot blocked down by the defender there. And that is time. What a fantastic game by these 221 women's teams this morning. Result, five goals to France, five goals to Germany. So a draw, I believe, will put Germany through top of that group. 
excellent game by both teams. Very young players. Great composure. Okay, so final stats on that game. Germany with 57% of the play, France 43. German shots, 19, 15 on target. France, 14 shots with 10 on target. Final score, five goals each. And we will be back on pitch two shortly with an under-21 men's game between France and Poland. We will see you soon. Good morning, Poland. How do you say good morning in Polish? You need to, to, to teach me that. Thank you. 
Vikings are getting in the, the pitch right now. It's uh, Bronx against Boland on this pitch number two on the under 21 male category. Welcome back to day three of the European Canoe Polo Championships from Quimbra in Portugal. Next game on pitch two will be an under 21 men's game between France and Poland. Teams just warming up on the pitch at the moment. This is a placing group game for positions between five and eight. So, these two teams, France and Poland, and the other two teams in this group, Netherlands and Poland, fighting for the highest ranking they can get between five and eight. The two teams we have here, Poland were ranked eight, finishing in eighth place at the last European Championships, with France being seeded five after the last Championships. Referee Zoe Anthony just letting the teams warm up until time. 
So our teams today for France, we have Hussein Edim Bidela, Leo Danhano, Alexandra Sirochi, Antoine Decochemont, Guillaume Lemarchand, Florian Pillon, Marine Legors, Yassine Madur, Poland. I'll just get this game underway, but as a start infringement called straight away. So, Poland get the first play of this, this game. Polish team, Simon Klask, Jan Blira, Marzak Brzech, Bartos Baranski, Jakob Olek, Aleski Kwa, Filip Jakwesk. So Poland with the first attack, but ball gone out of play for a goal line throw. So France on the attack. Just building their attack now, taking their times. Polish teams set up their defense. Two number sixes, Pilon and Kowal. Oh, a shot and a goal there. That's number eight from France Medour with the first goal of the game. What reply have Poland got to that? Okay, Poland just working their way up the field into that French zone. Then the shot goes off, but blocked down. Valera with the shot from Poland, but great defensive work from France. They're looking for a break here. They've got players away. Long shot, but great deflection there for Baranski. Baranski not quite back in goal, but still managing to deflect that shot. Great work there from the defence. Okay, Baranski is in goal now. Valera taking the corner for, sorry, De Hanol taking the corner for France. Back across to the side of the pitch, into the centre. What have they got? Lagot with the ball. Has he got anything? Blocked by the French, uh, Polish defender Baranski there. Long ball back out, 30 seconds left on that shot clock. France have got time. And another fantastic save there. Baranski is working hard under that goal to keep these French shots out. Some great goalkeeping so far. Oh, you could see Pilon looking there for that shot and away it went. Great work. So France extending their lead. Two goals to nil. Polish players trying to get into that French defence. France holding steady, driving them back out. Have they got any space? Ball across. Bransky's just paddled past that ball, but he has gone back and picked it up. Back out to the point, man. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. 
looking for a run in. No, clock, clock counting down. Six seconds. They've got to get this shot away. Can they do it? And ball's gone out, deflected by the French defence, out for a corner, off that shot. Olek taking the corner. Baranski. Shushawa. Timeout, says the referee. Paddle foul. So, Polish ball. Just on the edge of the French defence. What can they do with this? Free shot. Timeout, says the referee. Not quite in the right place. Drifting forward. So, let's pull that ball back. Okay, it's looking for the shot, looking for the shot, but no, not to be. And France, France with men away. Oh, and another save from Baranski. Great shot there from Le Marchand, but deflected out by Baranski once again. So, corner ball to France. De Henault to take. Middle. A uh, shot that was low, but saved by Baranski once again. Holding foul. No goal. Goal ball was in the net, but that's no goal. Whistle had gone before the shot went, so. So France will take that free shot right in front of the goal, block down, out for a corner. Baranski saving that. Medeur to take. Long ball out. French team making some great runs in here. De Heno and the shot. Baranski again saving that shot. Long, long ball back out from France. From that corner. In again, and a shot, and another save. Medo trying the same again, but Baranski once again saving that shot. France. And this time it goes in. Medo with the third goal for France. Good work there from France. Patience, kept working that, trying hard, going back and trying again. So, Poland, what can they do? Three goals down, two and a half minutes left of this first half. And they're looking for the shot. Is it on? Save there. Pilon, the defender, just putting that across. Out for a sideline throw this time. And long ball over. Olek. Olek looking for the shot. And it's saved once again. That's... France goalkeeper Budel. Hands on that ball, it was still in play. 
Kranz looking for the break. Long ball up. Budel made his way up the pitch. What can he do with this? Passes over to Badur, and that's another goal. French team quick up the pitch there. Nice fast break. Players away. No Polish defence set up there. Okay. So Poland with a bit of a mountain to climb now. Four goals adrift. Have they got any response to this? They're certainly trying to work their way into that French defence, but shot, but no, over the top of the bar. And long ball up once again. France with men to spare, but no, saved again by Baratski. Loose ball there, numbers pill on, picking that up. Baranski's not in goal, but still blocking it. Sitting sideways on, just out onto the pitch there. Still manages to deflect that ball out of play for a corner. Okay. Madura with the corner for France. Last 15 seconds of the game, first half of this game. Can France get another shot away? Looking for it, running out of time, Madur. Underneath this time, deflected and that's half time. So we go into half time with France in the lead by four goals, two nil. In this fifth to eighth place group game. Madour with three of those goals for France. Pilon with the other one. Teams just go in to their respective coaches for their half-time team talks, get a drink. France have had 13 shots in this first half of the game. All on target. Four converted. Great work from the goalkeeper there, I think, from Poland. Poland have had six shots with four on target. France taking 56% of the play and Poland 44%. At the moment, we have no cards given in this game. So good work from both of these under 21 teams. The other game in this group between Netherlands and Portugal is currently being played on the other pitch. So all these games to count towards their final seedings and placings in this tournament. We'll be back with you very shortly with the second half of this game. Welcome back. Teams lining up now for the second half of this under-21 men's game between France and Poland on pitch two. Excuse me. 
And we're off. Poland picking up that second sprint nice and cleanly from the centre. Taking that ball back. Poland now four goals behind. With the first attack of the second half of this game. France have got a solid defence in there, so Poland looking for that shot. What can they do? They have got the ball into the centre there. Oh, and it off the bottom bar and out. So possession goes to France. Boudel with that long ball down. No quick break for France this time though. They build up, taking their time to work their way down the field. And a shot off the top bar though. That was Legot with the shot for France. So, Poland attack. These players, oh, fantastic save there by Bedell for France. Long, long ball down. De Henel with the ball. Easy, easy shot in front of an undefended goal there. De Henel with goal number five for France. Polish team with a lot of very young players in, 16, 17 year olds, teams changing year on year as paddlers age out and go into the senior category. There's a holding foul there from France giving Poland the possession back. One of the Polish players only just six, only 16 years of age. French team, slightly older, between 19 and 21. Great attack though from Pol from France. Oh, and he bounces that off the bar. Clear sight of goal, but that's a mistake by De Hainol. Bouncing it off the bar, back into Polish hands. Can Poland capitalize on this? And get their first goal? No, they've dropped it. Picked up by his teammate there. Razak. Oh, and off the bar again. Really just not composing themselves, just firing these balls up for the shots. France now with a two and two defence. They have two players in by the goalkeeper. Two players just trying to track the ball, chase the ball down on the outside. And that's worked for them. They've won the ball. France with a long ball down the pitch. De Heno, and that's another goal. De Heno from France. Taking the score to six goals to nil. <laughs> French team seems to be in a class of their own with their shooting. All of their first half shots were on target. A lot of them were saved by the Polish keeper Baranski. A shot from Poland. And that goes out for a corner. Boudel, keeper for France, just blocking that out. 
Valera, Poland, trying to get that ball into the centre. He's done that, but can they get a shot away? No, it's out again. Shot blocked by with defenders on the outside this time. Le Marchand, I think, was the def defender in the front there. His team's working hard. Just under five minutes left of this second half. And unfortunately, that's out of the French goalkeeper. Vudel just putting that ball. Polish corner. Valera to take the corner for Poland. Oh, no. Polish player having to go off to substitute. We've lost a bumper. So, Voransky coming in to take that corner for Poland while the sub happens at the far end of the pitch. Back up to five players now. Rosiak just coming on. But French looking to get a break again. France down the pitch. Madur. Oh, no. And that one misses. So... Wide of the post there. Goal throw to Poland. Just over three and a half minutes. Six goals adrift here. So Poland with a bit of a mountain to climb at the moment. Don't think they're going to make much impact on this French team in this game now. French blocking that out on the front of the defence, not even reaching the keeper. So, France on the attack once again. Loose ball there, chased down by Poland, but picked up by France. And that is goal number seven. Boudel from France. Scoring goal number seven. All credit to this Polish under-21 men's team. A very young team, aged from 16 upwards. They all have many years to develop this team. French team much older. And they are placing in the top eight. Whatever happens now, they will be a top eight place. And that's a shot, but saved by... No, I think that's off the top of the bar. So, goal line throw for Bedell from France. Holding foul there by France, giving Poland the, the ball. Can Poland do anything with this? They have got men up the field. What can they do? Only two French defenders back. Oh, the tracking defender just blocks that down for France. Turning the play around once again. Referee says paddle foul. France ball still. Long shot, but that one goes wide. De Courchemont with that shot from France. Not much power to it and certainly off target there. Referees giving the first green card of the game there to Poland for unsportsmanlike behaviour. His teams have been very well behaved, playing very good game. Into the last minute now. Poland still looking for that consolation goal. 
Ball into the centre. What can they do with it? And it is another shot, but off the bar, back into play. Looking like it's gone out for a sideline throw now. Timeout, said the referee. It's a green card for number five. Green card for number five for a holding foul. Okay. Timeout, says the referee. Okay, we have a yellow card. Can't hear what the referees are saying there. Yellow card has been awarded. France, number five, going off. There's Le Marchand off the pitch for the rest of the game now, unless Poland score. It's a power play yellow card. If Poland score, he can come back on. Long ball up, Poland. Poland looking for that shot, and that's their first goal of the game, number six, Kujawa. But that also means the yellow card is cancelled and the French player can come back on for the last 20 seconds of this game. France seven, Poland one. Okay, France down there. Shot, and that's another goal. Madua with another goal for France. Okay, we're into the last 10 seconds. Can Poland get a final shot away? They can, but blocked down and out for a corner. Don't think we're going to have time to take this. As the game clock finishes, France eight, Poland one. So just after I was saying how well behaved these teams had been, we have a yellow card. On the whole, great game. Two great teams there, Poland and France under 21s. France not quite keeping their 100% record of shots on target in the second half. 20 shots in the total game with 17 on target. And we will be back with you very shortly with a men's Group F game between Netherlands and Poland. We'll be back with you soon. Thank you.
Welcome and good morning, everybody. Back here on pitch number two, game 130. Netherlands men team will play against the men's team from Poland on the beautiful Rio Mondego in the beautiful city of Coimbra. For the Netherlands in orange and blue, it will be with the number one, Ricardo Wright. With number two, Mats Pell. With number three, Lucas Reilers. With number four, Dylan Doe. With number five, Reimko van Vliet. With number six, Tiag Wevers. With number seven, Jochem Holgere. With number eight, Jukas Jolema. And for the Polish team on the right hand side, all covered in white and red. It will be with the number two, Jakob Maslak, with number three, Hubert Migalski, with number five, Pavel Michalek, uh, with number six, Mateusz Donart, with number seven, Michal Mazulask, with number eight, Tomas Smak, with number nine, Lukas Pilars, and with number ten, Bartolome Davidek. Both coaches make the last adjustments to the team, telling them the game plan again. Maybe some one or two short sentences to tell them what they have to do. Getting focused and now both teams get on the line. The game will start within the next few seconds. Two players will go up against each other for the sprint start. And here you can see the team's list for the Netherlands. Jeroen Dipernik as the coach. And for Poland it was Pavel Telemann. Mateusz Donard has to sit out because of a yellow card. Oh, I'm sorry, let me correct that he has he will have to set out for the next game if he gets another yellow card. Both of the team's captains are having a talk. I think they just finished talking and now the game is right about to start. Polish team got green lights. I think it will be number eight, Thomas Smak, going for the sprint start. Let's see who will win this first possession of the game. Uh, and now the ref's blown the whistle. Let's see who's going to take it. And it will be Poland. Number four, Darlin though, takes the ball for his team. So now let's see if they can open scoring within the first possession of the game. And he had a bit of trouble here. Hard time catching it. Number eight for the Netherlands, uh, Tiag Webers. Now Mats Pell loses the ball to the Polish player, number two, Jakob Maslak. Maslak with the ball, brings it up the pitch. Majalski takes the long shot and it just went wide. Netherlands team can count themselves lucky there that it did not win, go in. So now they have another 60 seconds to build up another offensive attempt. Let's see if they can find the gap in the Polish defense. Number, number five, Remko van Vliet is working inside with his teammate Jochem Holgere. Number eight takes it to the middle of shoots, but a good deflection by the Polish pedal. So now the Netherlands with the first corner of this game. Number four takes it on the right hand side. So Doch. Pell. Van Vliet with the ball getting pushed and it was a, a illegal hand tackle. Number two of uh, the Polish team will be rewarded with a green card for that. So now he has to watch out for the next 19 minutes that he does not do any stupid foul anymore because every other foul that will he rewarded with a green card will end up in a yellow for him and then he has to sit out for two minutes. 
The ref showing the players where to take the penalty. Number four with the ball, plays it back to his captain. Ball inside, try to knock it off his opponent's hand. Number three will get another green card. Oh, many green cards to start this game off. Number seven was just about to take the shot. Holger, but uh, Hubert Mijalski tried to get the ball out of his hands and uh, maybe he touched his opponent on that try. So now it will be a promising th free throw position for the Dutch team. Ah, great shot, but it hit the post. So now Jakob Maslak with possession on counter attack. Jakob Maslak with a great boat technique he's known for. Mijalski on the left hand side. Number three of no and number two of the Polish team finished fifth. Uh, in the German Championship, uh, both of them are playing for Rote Mühle Essen. So let's see what Mijalski can do. Maslak. Mijalski. Maslak. Polish team is working with two offenders inside, trying to force a gap in the Netherlands defense. But the defense is working very strong. Good defensive effort there. Ball played out to number seven of the Polish team, Michal Maluzaski. Ah, oh, and uh, he tried a shot. Jakub Maslak shot from the nine meter line, but the shot went wide. And now the Netherlands with another chance to open up scoring in this first half. Three minutes have been played without a goal. Number seven with the ball. Uh, deflected by a Polish pedal. Jakub Maslak, one of the lighter guy of his team. He doesn't weigh that much. Playing on the number one spot in the 3-1 defensive strategy. Mats Pell takes the shots. Mats Pell known as uh, one of the main goal scorers in this team of uh, the Netherlands. He plays for VSF Libla in the German Bundesliga and uh, has just finished his first season there. And in, in his first season couldn't have went any better because they, were, they went without any defeat. So Mats Pell played a whole season with VSF Libla unbeaten in the German Bundesliga and they finished, of course, uh, to do that, they finished first. So uh, Mats Pell can count himself as a German champion of 2019. Maslak. Back to the middle. Paddle foul called there, but the advantage has been given. Mijalski tried to pass it to Mijalski on the right hand side. So let's see what the decision will be. It only will end up in a free throw. The ref is having a talk with number eight, the captain of the Dutch team, Jolke Solema. Number nine, very strong work inside. Tverk Webers has really problems uh, with controlling him. Mijalski. Maslak, Mijalski. Michalek. Ah, ah, no look shot by 
Pavel Michalek, he puts up Poland in front with uh, five minutes played in this first half. Now scoring is open. Let's see if the Dutch team can answer that. What's Bell? Webers. Sjolema. Pell. Um, and the bad pass has been made. Number six, Jack Webers. Mats Pell. And since this year, Mats Pell is sponsored by CPS. Oh, and great goal. Jörg Webers opens up scoring and ties the game for the Netherlands. And that's how you answer if you do a bad pass like Jörg Webers did. Just score a goal and nobody will ever talk about it again. Migalski having a talk with the referee. Mateus and uh, Mateus Donat and uh, Migalski. Working on the defense, Maslak on the left-hand side. Good work by the Netherlands defense. And a five seconds violation will be called. Uh, I think uh, number five, I'm Kovan Vlet, a uh, bit disappointed by the referee's decision, I think. He was fouled with the paddle. He's complaining about it. But uh, that should not matter to him because now the attack is running and he has to do his best to put up the Netherlands in front. Number six, Webers. And now he had the chance to do it. Fouled on the shot attempt. And that will give him a penalty. Number five, Raimko van Vliet will have to take the Penalty, I'm not quite sure. Normally the foul player has to take the penalty. Refs are having a talk, whether it's a penalty or not. Let's see if the decision stays or if there will be a given free throw. You can see the referees on the left-hand side of your screen now. Uh, they just finished talking, so... Let's see what the decision will be. And a yellow card has been given to number six. Could not see it that good. I'm sorry. I'll let you know as soon as I know who's going out of the pitch there. Could not see it. Ah, uh, Lukas Pilars took the yellow card, number nine there for the Polish team. Just turned 29 this year. Let's see if he can stay strong in mind. Put it in. Oh, but what a great save it was by number 10, Bartolome Davidek. He makes sure that Poland stays in the game and now the Netherlands have a chance to take the corner. The yellow card that has been given to Pilars will remain. Even if a goal is scored by the Netherlands, there's no power play option on that one as he forced the penalty with his foul. Oh, and now the Netherlands are working very hard. Almost three guys inside there. Took a shot, but good deflection. Another good deflection. Let's see if the Netherlands can find a way to score within the next two and a half minutes of this half time. Netherlands took six shots 
and the Polish team only took four, so you can see the efficiency on the Polish team. A bit uh, too tight inside this Polish defense, I think. Uh, number six took the shot there. But if you keep working with six men inside a defense, it, everything is like real tied up. You uh, do hardly find any gap in that defense as an outside attacker. Migalski with the ball. Number seven brings it up for the Polish team. Looking for his teammate. Now the Netherlands are going with a man to man press. Good effort there by Pell. Fall has been called, so now another 60 seconds for Poland to build up another attack. One and a half minutes left to play. Poland with two green cards already, so if they get another one, the next one after that one will be rewarded with a yellow card. A team only can get three cards three green cards then the next card will be rewarded with a yellow even if the foul was not that hard number two with the ball back to number seven on the right hand side number three Jakob Hubert Migalski inside Number nine tries to score and he scores. Lucas Pilars puts Poland back in front. What a great shot it was. Just before the halftime break, 20 seconds left to play in this first halftime. And now Poland is up in front. Let's see if the Netherlands can tie. Number six takes the shot. The paddle was a bit close to his hand on that one. Let's see if the referee will decide whether to give a penalty or a corner. Oh, and it will remain as a corner. Ref stayed with their decision. Mats Pell puts it in. Three Polish paddles in front of him, but he still finds a way into the back of the net. What a great shot it was by Mats Pell. So now score is all tied up before halftime. Two to two, and I think this score will stay through the halftime break. Now both teams will have a talk with their coaches. Let's see if they can make some adjustments to take the advantage of this game and uh, score one goal more than their opponent in the second half. Till this moment, everything is tied up. Everything is possible. The halftime break gives me another chance to thank our sponsors of this competition. Let's start with the Yupin Sports, the supplier of the goals for this competition. Hugo Santa Casa, Club Fluvial de Coimbra, the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth, the University of Coimbra and Coimbra City Council. All those sponsors helped us in making this European Championship 2019 here in Coimbra happen you can see the next teams are warming up german under 21 the spanish men's team and the belgium men's team and on the right hand side you can see both uh, english player uh, great britain players it's the britain's men's team With number two, Sir Ryan McCutcheon. All those four McCutcheon players are warming up. You cannot see all them making some passes, getting their shoulders and arms warmed up. And you can see the Polish crowd. And on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, you can see the Netherlands fans all cheering up their, their players and their team, hoping for them to take the win in this 
middle group stage of uh, the European Championship. We'll be back in a few moments when the second half is just about to start. Twenty seconds left of this halftime break. Players are getting ready, getting on the line, and uh, get back in focus and on tension. On the left hand side, in uh, blue and orange, the Netherlands team. And on the right hand side, side all covered in white color. It's the Polish team. Both players now are going for the sprint start. Ref's blown the whistle and Poland takes another possession for the first half. I think a charging mistake. Charging foul was called. No, it was not. Number five to open up scoring within the first 10 seconds of the second half. Number five, Pavel Michalek puts his team up in front. Matt Spell on the right hand side, tried a shot there, what a great save it was by the Polish goalkeeper. Matt Spell is one of the greatest goal scorers of this men's competition. And pass inside to number seven. Ah, what a lazy pass it was and now the Polish defense has has got the ball. Jakub Maslak plays it to Migalski. Tries a chip and makes it. The captain, Hubert Migalski, puts his team up front. Now Poland is in the lead. Four for Poland and only two for the Netherlands. Netherlands are desperate to score in the second half. 60 seconds to create a shot. Matt Spell is now going in, working on Hubert Migalski. Now he switches with number five. Number six on the left hand side. Poland is doing a very great job right now. They are defending so well. Mats Pell. To back to Van Vliet. Mats Pell takes the shot and another great save by Bartonome Daviek. He makes sure that Poland stays up in front. On the next possession, I think Poland will luckily take their time, put turn some time of the game clock, get some time of the game clock, sorry. Number six on the left hand side. Ah, and the foul has been given there. Ref's shown where to take the free throw. Let's see if Dylan Doe can put up a good shot. He had a very great, great free throw in the first half. That just hit the bar. Mats Pell working for him. Nobody's allowed to touch Doe while he takes the free throw. No boat underneath or on top of him, though. Oh, and another great save. Netherlands is still desperate to score. Luke Van Vliet back to Weber's. Mats Pell, pass inside, great pass. And number eight, Jukas Molema, still desperate to find the back of the net. Seven minutes and 20 seconds left in this second half of game time. 
Webbers out to Pell. Netherlands is now attacking with two players inside. Number Poland is still playing the 3-1 defense with Maslak on top. Waiting for the counter-attack. Mats Pell now working inside. What a good block player he is. Van Vliet. Back inside. Sjolema. Pell. And Pell finds the back of the net. Great shot in the top right-hand corner. And now the score is even closer. 3-4 to four still. Poland up in front, but six minutes and 43 seconds left to play. Poland now with three green cards. They really have to watch out for those fouls. Every next green card will be re rewarded with a yellow and then a player has to sit out for two minutes of time. 40 seconds on the shot clock. Poland attacking with one guy in the middle, Lucas Pilars. And now a second one has just gone into the Netherlands defense. Working hard to find the gap and create the gap for their outside shooters. Number seven, great shot and it hit the post. And now the Netherlands will take another possession. Let's see what they can build up in this offensive attempt. Substitutions have been made. Number one, Ricardo White comes on the pitch. But he made a bad pass. And now Poland is back in position. Mateus Donat, I think he will go in inside. Working in the middle. Stopped by number one by number six on the number one spot of the Netherlands defense. Netherlands is also playing with a 3-1 defensive tactic. Migalski on the left-hand side, back to Maslak. Maybe an open gap on the right-hand side. Masla Maslak. Migalski. And Migalski finds the back of the net. Oh, the Netherlands won't be happy about this goal they just received. On the left-hand side, Sjolema, and another great save, Lukas Raiders. Pass has been deflected by the Polish defense, White. Pell, Sjolema. Only Lukas Raiders inside right now, Sjolema is joining him. Webbers. Timeout has been called. Oh, and as I just said, the next green card will be rewarded as a yellow. Jakob Maslak has to leave the pitch for two minutes. But there's a power play option on that card. So if the Netherlands score within the next few minutes, Maslak can go back on the pitch early. So as so soon as Poland receives a goal, Mazla can join the Polish team on the pitch back. Sjoloma taking the free throw. The Netherlands are now taking their time. Sjoloma has to watch out for goalkeeper tending. On the right hand side, White. Pell. Webbers. Webbers, but another great deflection, good defensive effort. And now a, pen, a goalkeeper tending has been called. Hubert Migalski takes the free throw, and I think Poland will now try to take some time off the clock. They are pressured one to man to man defense. That option is now avail available for the Netherlands team because they can still put somebody in goal and do a man-to-man -man press because the Poland team is leaking of one player. On the right-hand side, number eight, Lukas Sm Thomas Smak. Migalski. Migalski and Maslak finished fifth in the German Bundesliga for this season. 
I think they're not satisfied with this result for this for this season. Let's stay. Let's see if they will stay another season with Rotemüller Essen or if they will switch up teams. But that doesn't matter right now. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Ah, oh, pressured very good. And now the Netherlands. I don't know what is going on right now. Timeout has been called. Oh, and I think if Poland gets another 60 seconds, the Netherlands won't be satisfied with that one. Only seven seconds remained on the shot clock. And if, if there is only that less time on the shot clock, you, you don't really want to force any f other fouls and force the team to take maybe a very difficult shot from outside. Three minutes remaining in this second half. Referees having a talk with Migalski. And Migalski now has the chance to score, puts up a wide shot, but good save by Mats Pell. And now Pell brings it up. For the Netherlands team, Lucas Raiders. Lucas Raiders on the left hand side. Though, left handed guy of the team. Pass deflected to the Netherlands. Players are not satisfied with this, that one. They rather took the, they'd rather have took the, the paddle fall on that play. But that doesn't matter anyway. Now, Netherlands stays with the man-to-man -man press, desperately trying to get the ball because they have to score two goals just to tie up the game. Mazlak, bad pass, and now maybe a blocking foul will be called, and yes it is, Netherlands will take another possession. Two minutes left to play. They have to score two goals to tie up the game. And another yellow card will be given to the Polish team. I think it will be on Lucas Pilars for the blocking foul. Or call it illegal holding, whether you like. So now the Netherlands team will try to focus, give it everything they got left in their tank. They have a big advantage playing with five players, only on four players for the Polish team. Let's see what they can make out of this advantage. Red card. Oh, because Lucas Pilares, it was just his second yellow card. He will be rewarded with a red card. And will have to sit out even if Poland makes it to the next match stages. He has to sit out for a game. And that was just a very silly foul by the Netherlands team. I think somebody touched the goalkeeper and now it's Poland's possession. Referees called timeout, having a talk. If the, if the decision stays. And yes, the decision remains. Green card has been given. Yes, there was another green card. So now Netherlands with two green cards. Dylan Doe gets the green card. Maybe he was a bit harsh with the words to the referee. So now one and a half minute left for Netherlands to score two goals. Jakob Maslak passed with a try to pass with his left arm it is not his normal regular shooting arm and now Lucas Raiders has taken the possession Mats Pell shoots and what a great save it was by Bartolome Davide keeping his team up in front Netherlands only have scored once in this second half Poland is doing a very good job at defending Ah, 
Mud spell, maybe a bit qu too quick for the referee on that corner attempt. So now Mud spell takes the corner on the left hand side. One minute and ten seconds. Siolama complaining. Webbers. Siolama. Oh, and Do puts it in to close the score up. The new score will be 4 to 5. Still the advantages on the Polish side. One minute left to play. Netherlands will now go with a man to man press, I guess, to get another possession, to have another chance to score a goal and tie the score up. They have to give it everything they got left in their tank. Lucas Raiders, Hubert Migalski, and Lucas, uh, Hubert Migalski is so strong with the ball. You will really have a hard time trying to take it off him. Matspel on Mazlak. Mazlak. And Matspel gets the ball now. 35 seconds left to score for the Netherlands. Though up in front of the goal. One on one on the goalkeeper. And he puts it in to tie up the score. Netherlands 5, Poland 5. Now everything's possible. Score is all tied up. And Netherlands remain with the full court press on the Polish team. Let's see if they can stay strong in mind or if they will lose the ball another time to this strong Netherlands defense. Number seven with the ball. The referee is telling him where to stand and take the pass. Maslak with the long shot. Timeout has been called. It's the last minute of play time, so every foul that is a green card will be rewarded to with a yellow card. Illegal holding, and as I said, Czech Wevers gets the yellow card for the Dutch side. 20 seconds now for the Polish team to score. They really have the advantage here. And the Netherlands are only with four players on the pitch. They are looking for the last shot to take in this half. Nine seconds left. Let's see what Mi Masla can put up. He throws up a shot. Advantage has been given to the Netherlands team and now the game has just ended. Final score tied up. Five for the each team. Netherlands against Poland. And this will sum it up for this men's gr middle group stage game. Programm hier immer wieder, hä? Ja. 
So now on pitch two, we have a very exciting game to come up to us. Game 133, Germany against a French team in the man class. It's a game of the middle group stages. On the left-hand side, you can see warming up the German team all in black, red and yellow. And on the right-hand side, you can see the French team warming up as well in white and blue. Players for Germany with number one, Julian Prescher, with number two, Dennis Witt, with number three, three Lennart Unterfeld, with the number four, Lukas Richter, with number five, Jonas Gauselmann, with the number six, Robert Pest, with the number eight, the captain of the team, Jonas Fieren, and with the number ten, Felix Junge. On the right hand side with the number one, Alain Linel. With number two, Baptiste Cotta. With number three, David Linier. With the number five, Baptiste Gullard. With the number six, Alain Koric. Kornick. With the number seven, Franck Bezon. With number eight, Bion Richer. And with number nine, Valentin Gori. Youngest player on the side of the French team is Alain Linel. He's playing in goal. This year he could have still played. Ah, he's sorry, he's just one, uh, one year out of the under-21 men's class. And on left-hand side for the German team, there are two very young guys, Lennart Unterfeld and uh, Julian Prescher. Both were born in uh, 1995. So coaches having the last talk with the team, making some last adjustments. Weather's quite nice in uh, Coimbra. A bit cloudy on this morning, but a uh, perfect weather to play. It's not too hot yet. Baptiste Collard really has to watch out in this game. If he receives another yellow card, he won't be a, he won't be allowed to play in the next game. And in this middle group stages, every game counts. I think Jonas Gauselmann has some problems with his right hand. Physiotherapist is just helping him 
to recover as quick as possible. And the refs blow on the whistle. Both teams are going strong with number eight, Jonas Viren. And uh, for French team on the sprint start, Valentin Goury. But I think uh, Valentin went a bit early on that one. So it will be. First possession in this game will be for Germany. Richter with the ball. Let's see how their attacking strategy will be for this game. Do they start with two players inside? Yes, they do. Pressure and with pre going hard on the French defense. Lukas Richter tried a shot there, but good block by Alain Corré. In the middle for the French team, Baptiste Cotta. In goal, as I said, the youngest player of this French team, Alain Lien. Oh, and the boat foul has been called by the referee, Valentin. Gori went on the spray deck of Robert Pest. Pest. Viren. Viren. Pest to the right hand side. Pest. Plays it back out. Save Germany. Really good at building up their, def uh, their offense. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. So. Richter. But Kotta tried to put it out of his hand. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Witt on the left hand side. Richter. Oh, and Witt wanted the ball there. He was on the outside line. Pressure recovers the ball, gets a good rebound for his German team. So now they will have another 16 seconds to build up their attack. Fieren. Pest. Richter on the left hand side. French team is now playing a very offensive kind of defensive strategy. Trying to keep Germany as far from the goal as possible. Viren. Witt. Back to the top of the key. Robert Pest. Going inside. Pushed by Gori. Richter. Viren. Fake the shot there, Witt. Puts up a shot, but a good save by Linnell. So now it's the French team with their first possession of this half. Germany had much time of possession on their first offensive attempt. Almost three minutes and now it's French team that is attacking 40 seconds left on the shot clock let's see what they can build up three guys inside right now it's a bit too tight so one has came out of the german defense Alain Linnell on the left hand side Cotta Linné Linné but a good block by the german defense On the right hand side, number six. But good block by Julian Brescia. Pest. Junge. Hardly pressured by number eight, Bion Richter. Richter. Robert Pest. Vieren. So now a substitution has been made. Leonard Unterfeld joins the German attack. Unterfeld with some problems. He has a cut on his right hand. Junge on the left hand side. Looking for the ball. Vieren. Unterfeld. Vieren on top of the key. Vieren. 
Three seconds left on the shot clock. They really have to take a shot right now. Ju shot just put up before the shot clock ran out. But it went over the goal, so now it will be French in possession for the second time of this game. Let's see what they can build within the next 16 seconds, or 60 seconds of this shot clock. Going in strong, David Linier. But a paddle foul has been caused, so now Germany will take possession again. Still, still nobody has scored within this first half. Unterfeld passed. They are playing it safe. Unterfeld with Julian Prescher going hard inside the French defense. Fieren. Fieren, well known as one of the best shooters on this German side and even in this world. He's one of the best shooters, I think. Unterfeld with the attempt there. There was a boat, there has a boat foul been called. Even though it was a very good shot position, Unterfeld plays it smart, plays it back outside, tries to build up. An even better chance, maybe an open one on one situation on the goalkeeper. Unterfeld. Passed on the left hand side. Unterfeld. Unterfeld takes the shot and puts it into the back of the net. He opened up scoring in this man middle group stage game. On Leonard Unterfeld puts it in. So now Germany up by one, the score is one to nil for Germany against this French team. On the right hand side, Franck Besson with the ball, Cotta, left hand side, David Linier working inside. So now the French team has to build up another defensive, the offensive attempt. Cotta with the ball. Fifty seconds on the shot clock. French team now trying to get the gap in the German defense. And a boat foul has been called by the referee. He's telling the player where to go with the ball, taking the free throw right underneath the goal. Franck Besson working on Lukas Richter in the middle. David Linier, well known as one of the best shooters in this French team, will take the free throw. Let's see what he can do. Besson. Four paddles in front of David Linier. Takes the shot, Kotta, but a good deflection by Jonas Gauselmann, getting hyped up on that play. Very good block by Gauselmann. So now the French team has to take a corner. Lucas Richter, uh, I'm sorry, Jonas Vieren working on Franck Besson, trying to push him out of this German defense. And now Felix Junge. Working on the right-hand side of the German defense. Kotta with the ball. David Linier recovers the ball for the French team. Kotta. 40 seconds left in this first half. 40 seconds left on the shot clock. Two minutes remaining of game time. Kotta. Germany is giving French a very hard time attacking. They are so strong in defense, very well built up defense. Big and heavy guys. On the right hand side, Linel. Shot attempt by number five, Baptiste Gellar, but just went on top of the bar. And so now Germany has its next possession in this first half. One and a half minutes left to play. Richter with the ball, brings it up the field. Jonas Gauselmann working inside, 
as well as Jonas Vieren. Junge. So now Jonas Vieren has joined the outside field. Richter, Pest, Junge, Jonas Vieren, free on the right hand side, but Junge very good at taking his time right there. Playing it smart, 20 seconds left on the shot clock. That's plenty of time for the German offense to build up another shot. Pest, Richter, back inside to Jonas Gauselmann, had a hard time catching it. Now the French team in possession. Maybe with a fast break opportunity. Carter, David Linier puts up a long shot, but good save by Robert Pest. So now the French team will have to take another corner. Very good. Robert Pest really made sure that Germany stays up in front on that shot attempt. Carter, David Linier and Bion Richard working inside the German defense. They're really having a hard time there. Kota on the left-hand side, defended by Junge. Tried a shot, but it just went wide. And that sums it up for the first half of this men's match in the middle group stages. Germany's up in front by one. Score for the halftime is 1-0. Let's see if a French team can get their way back into this, find their way back into this game. Coach is making some adjustments. Three minutes left of halftime break. We'll be back in a few seconds. Die Halbzeitpause gibt mir die Gelegenheit, alle meine Freunde und Familie da draußen vor den Monitoren zu begrüßen. Wir werden sehen, ob Deutschland diese Führung behalten kann. Ich denke, sie machen einen hervorragenden Job. Und ähm, es ist wirklich eine schwere Aufgabe, die sie da bekommen haben mit Frankreich. Aber sie tun ihr Bestes und... Äh, wenn sie so weiterspielen können, dann denke ich, äh, haben sie eine sehr gute Chance, diesen Sieg mit sich nach Hause zu nehmen. So, 10 seconds left for this halftime break. Players are getting back on the line. Let's see if the French team have talked their game plan well enough to tie up the score and maybe even take the lead in the second half. Germany is also getting back on the pitch. Both have the green signal. It will be uh, Jonas Vieren going for the sprint start. And on the left hand side, all covered in white and blue. For the French team, it will be Cotta starting. Now the referee is blowing the whistle. 
game has started. Kota, oh, he made it very clearly there that he's the faster guy on that attempt. So now the French team has first possession of this half time. Let's see if they can tie it up within their first possession. On top of the key, number nine, Valentin Gilgori. The, one of the youngest players of this French team. And uh, here you can, you could have seen the youngest player, Alain Linel, in goal with the number one, playing for Arsenie in uh, the French league. Valentin Gori just switched teams to Montpellier for the next season. Number five taking the shot, but a good block there by the German defense. First minute has been played in this second half of game time. Franck Pezon. Cotta. Pezon. Linel. Pezon. French team is really s building up slow, trying to good, get as good as a chance they can create. Trying to get the best chance they are able to create, waiting for a good shot opportunity. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. They really have to force it right now, really have to force a shot. Franck Besson. Oh, good block by Dennis Witt. You're really having a hard time against this strong defender. Witt won't make it easy on you. Germany remaining with the 3 1 defensive strategy. Lukas Richter in the middle, Jonas Viren up in front, David Linier. Looking f desperately looking for a teammate to pass the ball. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Franck Besson on top of the key. Besson. Cotta. Defended by Julian Prescher. Ah, and Jonas Viren gets possession. Advantage has been given. Witt. Pest, and now Germany will build up their next offensive attempt. Let's see if they can put the score up even further, score another goal, put the French team out of reach for the first moment of this game. Firen, Pest, Unterfeld. Unterfeld going in strong, looking for his teammates, but good defense by the French team. Viren fakes the shot, but knocked out of his hand by Franck Besor. That will be rewarded with a card, I assume that. Having a talk there, Besor immediately apologized for this foul. And a green card has been given to Franck Besson. Substitution has been made. Besson still apologizing for this hard foul. Felix Junge working on the left-hand side. A strong block on Richer. Jonas Viren going in for the free throw to take. Three French pedals in front of him. Passes it back outside, plays it safe. Unterfeld. Unterfeld very good at surfing and finding his way into defenses. Pest. Viren. Zurück zu Pest. Unterfeld, Prescher, now Unterfeld and Junge working inside, 
Pressure outside. Unusually. Junge. Oh, and he touched the outside line. Ball went out of bounds and now it will be the French possession. Unterfeld went a bit lucky there. Didn't give the ball immediately to the French opponents. Now the French team has another chance to build up their offensive attempt. Cotta. Going inside David Linier and uh, number eight, bon Benoit uh, Richer on the left hand side, number five with the ball. Linel pushed by Jonas Gauselmann. Cotta. Linier. Went for the ball there. We really have to watch out for this man, David Linier. Very strong shooter. He's playing in the French League for Montpellier. And he tried a shot there, but a good block. But illegal holding was called. I don't know where it is exactly was. Didn't see a foul on that shot attempt. But I think it was in the middle. Cotta will take the free throw. Referee is telling him exactly where to go. Now he's in a good shot position. Let's see what he can put up. Timeout has been given. Oh, Witt. He has really to watch out that he lets the free throw shooter leaves him alone. You don't, you're not allowed to uh, go on his spray deck or on top of his boat. That is a rule change that has been made for this year. You may not touch a guy that is uh, taking a free throw or a corner. Cotta. David Linier. Bad pass by Cotta. And intercepted by Unterfeld. And now the German tag is running. Let's see if they can put up a good counter attack. Firen takes his time. And uh, the French team is now back for defense. Three minutes and 30 seconds left to play. Firen. Unterfeld. Unterfeld still the only one who has scored in this game. Almost 17 minutes played. And still only one goal. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Pest. Maybe with a chip shot? No. And a good save by Alain Linel. And now the counter attack is running. Germany very strong on getting back to defense. Linel. And now 40 seconds left on the shot clock for the French team to build up their offensive attempt and put up another shot. Liné taking his time, waiting for the substitution to be made. Goury on the right hand side and now Franck Besson is back on the pitch and tries his luck there. And a corner will be given. Uh, Robert Pest is not very lucky about, happy about that one. I think nobody touched it. But somebody must have touched it. Corner has been given and now French team has another sh 60 seconds to attempt another shot. Two minutes and 12 seconds left on the, sh on the game time. Gori, Liné, Gori now working inside on Jonas Gauselmann. Liné, 
Maison. Goury on the right hand side. Waited a bit too long there, if you ask me. And David Linier puts up a shot, but just need uh, pu puts it on the bottom bar. So now Germany has another chance and another possession to put the score up even further. One minute and 15 seconds left to play. Germany will definitely take their time there on that sh shot attempt. They won't rush anything. 30 seconds left on the shot clock. They try to take some time off the game clock. 20 seconds left. Richter. Pressure inside. Richter looked for him there, but can find couldn't find the way and now Dennis Witt has scored for the German team and now Germany is up by two. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake there. It was Robert Pest. I could not see it because of the angle of our camera and now David Linier puts up a shot, but a good save by the German defense. It will be a corner. Timeout has been given. It will be very hard for the French team to tie this game up. I don't think they can and they don't believe it either. So now they try to close it up and get another goal. Take the time of the game clock and uh, try not to receive another goal. They want to take the last shot. Cotta. Maison. Cotta. Two seconds left. And a good block and uh, Germany takes possession for the last time of this game that just has ended in this second. Germany wins over fr the French team, 2 to nil. Goals have been scored by Lennart Unterfeld and uh, Robert Pest. The French team did, did not want to rush anything on the last shot attempt because every, th every goal that you receive matters, matters for the middle group stages. So I think they played it very smart there. Here you can see the game stats. France a bit of the advantage in uh, ball possession wise. Total shots on target. Both teams are the same. And uh, committed fouls. You can see there were some more fouls on the French side. But uh, I think it was a very fair game on both sides. So thanks for joining me, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll be back within a few moments for the next match on pitch number two.
Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on this nice game of pitch two, game number 222. We're playing the Netherlands against Poland in the women division. Uh, first of all, I would like to give a big thanks to our sponsors. We got a uh, Coimbra City Council, the University of Coimbra, the club Fluvial de Coimbra, that's the local canoe club, who did a tremendous job by hosting this tournament. We got Yoka Santa Casa and Yupin Sports, the supplier of the goals for the competition, also known as CPS. And we got the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth. I would like to give you the names of the Dutch ladies. With number one, Charlotte Bakkes. With number two, Selina Dijkstra. Number three, Alicia van den Berg. Number four, Marieke van Hofslot. Number five, Linda van As. Number six, Marlene Wessels. Number seven, Sarissa van Veenendaal. And number eight, Dierertje Bink. And for the Polish girls, they're now entering the pitch. I will give you the names. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. I will do my best. For number one, Christina Nowaka. Number two, Nikola Terbiloska. Number three, Marta Bokun. Number four, Katarzyna Galina. Number five, Justina Tirovic. Number six, Susanna Grolik. Number seven, Monika Kulas. And number eight, Veronika Josukwicz. <laughs> Sorry for that. My name is Martijn de Vries and I will host this commentary with Arthur Lungley. Oh, George Lungley, sorry. Hi, yeah. Yeah, it's worth noting this is a second group game in the senior women's. Um, the Netherlands and Poland here both having won one previous game. Netherlands have edged ahead into first place on goal difference, having beaten their first game by five goals. Poland only by one. Sweden also being in the contention with a win, but a two goal difference. Um, so everything to play for here. In this division, they are playing, this is the bottom half. So they are playing for, uh, what would it be? Sixth to 10th place. Oh no, no, of course. Yes, this is senior women, so we have a bit of a mix up here. Because of the odd number of teams, there are nine teams in this league. The top team from this group has an opportunity to go into the top half. They will play against the bottom team in the top group. And then the winner of that plays against the very top team in the entire league in their semi final. So it's a tough path up, but if they can pull it off, well worth it. Otherwise, they will be playing for fifth through ninth. And here we go, lining up for the sprint. For Poland, we have number one, Christina Nowaka. And the Netherlands, number five, Linda Van Ass. Netherlands getting that quite comfortably. And they start the first attack. Here, trying to pile into the Polish defense, sending in number five first. Doing the same tactic their under-21s team do as well. Bringing the, and that's, oh, that was a solid shot there. Going again and deflected by a keeper. The Dutch here choosing to run a star, but instead of having the ball right on the edge, putting it on the second player in, giving them the option to go both directions around their star. Making the... Uh, Polish defense here really having to think. And oh, that was close. Trying to get that number five inside the defense, underneath the goal, trying to get that pass to her, getting it to her this time. And they get the shot. <laughs> Linda Van Aster. And that's exactly how you want to see this working. Having that player in the defense, right underneath the goal, getting the ball to them and getting that shot nicely off. And the Polish turn to get their uh, to get their turn back see what they can do in response the stands here are full of bright orange t-shirts the sun may not be out so luckily we're not all blinded
The Polish team is now in the attack with a strong defense line of the Dutch team. Got 25 seconds on the shot clock and there was a little bit missed of the pass. There was a nice opportunity there on the left side of the field. With only 70 seconds on the clock, the Polish are now a little bit in a rush. And they got a long distance shot from number 7, but it goes all the way over the goal. But this is something they need to do because of the shot clock. shot clock was only on 5 seconds. Now the Dutch have the ball again. Only 2 minutes played. It's already 1 goal for the Netherlands and 0 for Poland. Dutch are trying to do the same tactics again with number one, Charlotte Buck is in the center. Previous World Championships, he became the top scorer of the women team. Here they come left with a nice pass and ah, oh, she just missed it by our on the bar. But the pass was really, really good. The Dutch girls are going five out, so they're going full, full pressure on the ball there. And this results immediately in a ball takeover. Referee was a little bit confusing there. And here goes the pass. Long distance shot for number one. And again, she hits the bar. Second time in a row from Charlotte Bakkes that she hits the bar. This is not lucky at all. Dutch girls are still going man to man, or I would say woman to woman. And you can see a lot of pressure they put in there to give it difficult for the Polish team to go to the goal of the Dutch team. There will be the long pass up there. Nice battle there for position. But the Polish girl now is in a good position to make a, a turn. Now she's not doing that, she's, taking for the, she's going for the pass. This is almost five seconds. Oh, this is a nice pass in the hands of the Dutch team. This is not you want to have from your Polish team. This is why the Dutch girls are going man to man. Full pressure and let that Polish team make the mistake. They're going here for the fast break. There's no goalkeeper yet, and she's going for the long shot, and nice save from number five of the Polish team, Justyna Tirovic. So there will be a corner for the Dutch team. Taken by Alicia van der Berg, coming into the side. Nice pass. Dutch missed a little bit of speed there, looking for the for the pass. I think the pedal was a little bit too close, but ref doesn't think so. And again, immediately pressure on the Polish team, but not everybody's paying attention. But again, a nice takeover for the Dutch team. Ah, this is not a pass you want to give. The referee already saw a fall a few seconds before, give it advantage. But because the Dutch team was not in favor of the ball, he blow it whistle. <laughs> Stupid foul from the Dutch team by hitting the goalkeeper. Oh, there's some bumper there loose. Poland is a little bit with a man in favor. Nice shot from number one, Charlotte Bakas. Nice block with the pedal. There goes Linda Frostad again. What just happened is that the number eight from Poland, she lost her bumper. She went for substitution, but her bumper was still on the field. If the referee saw this, it meant a yellow card because there was already another substitute. And all the care you will have needs to be over the line, even if it's fall down of your boat. Dutch team is trying to do the same tactics again. Succeed a little bit, but the Polish team try to keep their defending line strong. Thirty seconds on the shot clock. Four minutes and fifty seconds on the normal clock for the first half. The Polish team is playing one-two-two, so a little bit. So they play with two chasers there, but they're not really attacking. The people who come in. Here comes Charlotte Bakkes and a nice shot and a score. This was not an easy goal at all. With three pedals of the Polish team there, she managed to throw her around the pedals. And I think the goalkeeper was a little bit surprised that she took that shot. 
So with four minutes on the clock, the Netherlands scored two times and Poland scored zero times. That Dutch team now are going in a 1-3-1 defense, so they're not going five out. Gives it a little bit more space now for the Polish team. But they keep pressure on the ball. Here goes number four. With a nice shot and with the, she hits the bar and she scores. Goalkeeper was not paying attention there. Very nice shot of the number four of Poland, Katisha Kalina. The Dutch team was not suspecting this. And immediately the Dutch team is going there after the fast break. And again a shot from the number one, Charlotte Bakkers, but this one was hit, was blocked. And here goes with number three, Alicia, and she scores a goal all the way down on the back of their boat to get some space from the pedal. And this is a nice response of the Dutch team. Dutch coaches are not really confident yet in the, the way they are attacking. Both teams now in the ball position. They're not passing really good. It looks a little bit nervous. And there are now two girls in the center of the defense line of the Dutch. And another long shot, but this went way, way over. This is not what you want to do. This is too easy to give this ball away. The Dutch coach was throwing the ball in the field. She's not allowed to do that, so she got a little warning from the referee there. But she was just trying to help her own team. She's not allowed to do that. We got that nice guys there with the flag in the hands with this really, really bright yellow shirts. Nice pass to the left side of the field. Another pass to the center. But again, the Dutch team hits the goalkeeper. And that's not allowed. This is an easy takeover for the Polish team. The Dutch team are not going five out, or are they? The goalkeeper did not decide what to do. She was not really listening to what the rest of the team said, so needs to go all the way to the ball. But this is pretty lucky that she get the ball here. And here goes the Dutch team. There's a little bit of space on the right side. Ah, Charlotte Bakker, she wants to make a fake shot, but she lost the ball out of her hand. It just slipped out of her hands. And the Polish team is back in ball position again. A lot of movement in the center of the field. A lot of aggression shown there. And again, the Dutch are taking over the ball. The Polish team really needs to think of something of this. Here goes Marika again, and it's two against one. Polish girl is going for it. Ah, she hits the bar again. The girls are not really accurate in shooting on target. I think she should have given the pass to, uh, to number three, Alicia van der Berg. She was open for the goal, but she decided to take the shot herself. With only one minute on the regular clock, 40 seconds on the shot clock. Dutch are in the final attack again. Nice pass to the center. And another nice, ah, oh, she didn't catch it. Just slipped out of her hands. And now the Polish team is trying to for the fast break, but the Dutch is putting pressure man to man immediately. It's a pretty successful defense for the Dutch because they already took over ball position four times. Here's a little bit more movement over there. 25 seconds until it's break time. Number seven of the Polish team was, is free under the goal. But she cannot make that long pass. Long pass goes to number one. Goes all the way back. Number five now is free. Nice push with five seconds on the clock. Here's come the long shot. And she just missed. So this is the end of the first half. Three goals scored by the Netherlands. Only one by Poland. And the Polish team really needs to think of something of that strong defense five out of the Dutch team. Dutch team needs to be more accurate on the scoring. 
And then we will all see what this game will bring up. If you see the statistics, ten sh nine shots on the targets from the Dutch and they scored only three times. Poland is a little bit more accurate with the shots on the targets, one on one. No cards given yet by the referees. I think this will be a little bit different in the second half because the Polish team needs to win this game. <laughs> At the same time, there's on pitch number one, there's a game from Spain against Sweden. And it's four for Spain, and I think it's two for Sweden. And this is the same group. It's a group of five teams. And the number one of this group will play an extra game against the number four of the top group. If they win it, they go to the semifinals. So it's a really, really long and tough route to go to the semifinals. And all the teams know it, so that makes this Games really excited. And then the, to give you a little update of that group, the Dutch team played one game and won. The Swedish, Swedish team played one game and they won as well. The Poland team played one game and won as well. The Spain team played one and lost one. And the Danish team played two games and lost two. So if the Dutch team wins this, it gives a little bit more benefit of going through. And uh, this is as well for the Polish team. So this will be a really excited day for those girls. With a lot of games. So we are ready for the second half of the game. The Netherlands against Poland. Both teams are lined up. We got a green. We got both green flags. Referee have some problems somewhere. Yeah. Referees are lining up as well now. Got a green flag for the Polish team. And we got as well a green flag for the Dutch team. And we start up. The first sprint was for the Dutch team. The second sprint is as well for the Dutch team. The ball was a little bit underneath the boat. So we were a little bit surprised where the ball was going up. And immediately there's a lot of speed in the Dutch attack. They want to score a fast goal. Nice passing there. And on the left side, Stoltenberg free, nice shot, but that's a really, really nice save of the Polish number five, Justina Tirovic. This is why you want to have a goalkeeper on the goal. Really important. If you get a good goalkeeper, it helps you a lot. Polish team still keep playing one, two, two. With two chasers in front, but they're not really chasing the ball. They're just there as a to stop an attack. And this is the fourth time that the Dutch team committed a foul by touching the goalkeeper. Nice pass there on the right side of the field. Number one can make a long shot. But number seven of the Dutch team was just in time underneath her goal. And it was Sarissa van Venendaal just managed to be there on time and, s and prevent the Polish team from scoring a goal. I think the Polish team does a really good job by defending really close to the goalkeeper because already four or five times they were managed to get their ball 
by a fault of the Polish Whoa, this was a really nice long distance shot from the number three of Poland, Marta Buchen. Marta also a really experienced player for the Polish side. She brings the score up to three for the Netherlands and two for Poland with eight minutes remaining on the clock. <coughs> Dutch team are trying to attack again. From, from the right side all the way to the left side center. Dutch team in a little bit space on the left side. Here it goes with a left hand shot. And this is a corner. Nice save again for the goalkeeper number five. Also the captain Justina Tirovic. Another attack out of the corner. A lot of, lot of movement over there. Ah, oh, she was doing like she was giving a pass, but dribbled through. Polish team saw it. Stopped the ball there again. Not really nice passing there. And number one of the Polish team is total free there. This is a nice fast break for the Polish team. A lot of pressure of number seven. Ah, oh, she does a really nice job there to get ball position. This was really difficult there. Oh, this is sloppy. She just threw the ball over her head, hits the boat, and it bounced all the way over the line. A lot of stupid mistakes are now taken. Both teams get a little bit nervous. They need to control their head to get this game going for their own. Green card is given for the number three of Poland. And this time it's uh, the same fault the Dutch team always made. Hitting the keeper, what's not allowed. Dutch team is uh, are attacking. Nice pass to the center. Here comes a shot. Ooh, and it was a nice touch of the defending team. Another pedal fall there. What are the Dutch girls now doing? Are they falling back to 1-3-1 one, one position? No, they're going from man to man. This is not good communication at all because the half of the team was going man to man and the rest was falling back. The number six of the Dutch team, the captain has a little bit trouble with her captain band. Flying all around. So it goes for the substitution to recover it. Dutch team really needs to be careful with a long distance shot and again a long distance shot. Polish team now knows the weakness of the Dutch team. But this time, number seven, Sarissa van Veenendaal was not surprised for a long distance shot and saved it. Five and a half minutes on the clock. The scoring is three for the Dutch and two for Poland. Both get a little bit more space down the defense line. Here goes Alicia van der Berg with a nice touch and a good save of the goalkeeper. Here goes a fast break again, but hit by the number one of Poland and a... Ooh, this was really close. The second half is evolving. It's getting more excited than the first half. A lot of mistakes from both teams that results in some good opportunities. The number one, Charlotte Bakas from the Netherlands is going in the center. That team goes around, a lot of speed, a lot of distance. On the right side, there's a nice shot opportunity. And this is the goal from number seven, Sarissa van Veenendaal. This is a nice attack. I think they trained on this a couple of times. It look, looked like a tactic they all thought of. And here comes the Polish team. With four and a half minutes to play, it's four for the Netherlands and two for Poland. Another long distance shot, but this is not good at all. This is an easy ball position swap, swip, swap, sorry. <coughs> Dutch team take their time a little bit more now. They're pretty confident with the two goals different. They cut the time on their end, but there goes the fast attack again. And again on the left side, there's a little bit more space. Kiss to the center. And she tries this shot. 
I don't think this was a good opportunity with four pedals in front of you. But again, the time is in the favor of the Dutch team. Clock is ticking. Three minutes 40 on the clock. Shot clock reset now. Dutch team do are again doing the same attack every time. And every time they fight on space on the right side and then in the center. Dutch team is falling back. They take a little bit more distance so they can cover up more speed. Waiting to see a little hole in the defense line of Poland. There they go again. Polish team is trying to stop this attack. And again on the right side there's some space. And a nice save again from the goalkeeper of Poland. You can see this coming every time because the Dutch team is doing everything, the same thing all over and over again. Slowing down the game a little bit. Referee does not think that's a good idea, so he gives a timeout. Nice pass to the center, and again on the right side is open. But there was a good defense there of the Polish team to prevent to give the pass. Dutch team is now trying the other way around. Starting now on the right side, see if there's an opportunity coming forward on the left side. But again, on the, there will be a pass to the center. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Dutch team now will go for a fast attack, but be careful for the fast break of the Polish team with their long distance shots. Well goes to number six, Marlene Wessels, the captain of the team. Here she goes for the shot and nice save with the goalkeeper. And another corner for the Dutch team. All in favor of Dutch teams. Now two minutes remaining on the normal clock with two different goals. Four to the Dutch and two for Poland. Poland now is putting more pressure on the ball because they really need to win this game to go to the semi-finals. And it gives a little bit more opportunity all the way over to the left side. Another shot. Now so you pass it. Shot from Alicia van den Berg. And it was saved again by the goalkeeper of Poland. Goalkeeper of Poland does a tremendous do job. Stopped a lot of shots on the goal. Polish team is a little bit slow now in uh, putting pressure on the ball. One minute, 20 seconds on the clock. And here it goes again. Nice pass to the center. And a really short shot. Surprise the goalkeeper. This is what you need to do to to score with this goalkeeper. You need to surprise her by a short shot. One minute, ten on the clock. Five goals for the Netherlands, two for Poland. Dutch team are now also playing 1-2-2. Two, two. Falling back to 1-3-1, one, one, just defending the goal. They got 15 more seconds. 35 seconds on the shot clock. Comfortable. It looks all comfortable for the Dutch team with five goals against two goals from Poland. Polish team knows that well. They need to be careful to not get more goals behind. A lot of pressure now. And a nice goal. This was a really nice goal. Number seven of the Polish team was... She was all the way on the pressure, but she managed to make a nice goal. The number seven, Monika Kulas. This was a really important call for the Polish team with 27 seconds on the clock. The Polish team is falling back, not going for pressure on the ball. What's happening there? There's a yellow card. Why is this yellow card? A little bit confusing. Polish team thinks they can have the ball. 27 seconds on the clock. Now the Polish team goes man to man. Dutch team only needs to keep the ball in position. You know, they already decided the game is ended. Five for Spain and three to Sweden. Clock is ticking, 25 seconds. Nice pass to number three, Alicia van den Berg, one of the strongest players. Just keep the ball in position. And this goes well. 
Nice passing there. She even managed to go free there. She's going for a long distance shot, but she missed it. But it's okay because we've got four seconds left on the clock. And this is the end of the game. The Netherlands won in an important game against Poland. Five for the Netherlands, three for Poland. Thank you all for watching. We will be back with you shortly with the game under 21 semi-finals for the women. It's Italy against Germany. You see a lot of shots on the goal from the Netherlands. 20 shots, 17 on target and only five, go five shots were scored.
So hello man and welcome back everybody here on pitch number two. The next game, game number 434, semi-final between, between Italy and Germany, which will be the first semi-final of this European Championship in the under-21 women's class. The other one is played on pitch number one, Great Britain against French. Game will start within a few moments. Official game start should be on 11.50. On the left-hand side for Germany, all covered in white and black with number one. Sorry, we're having some difficulties. For the under-21 with number two, Hilke Vogt, with number three, Annika Knöpfel, number four, Hannah Kunz, number five, Nina Hachenburg, number seven, Nele Schmalenbach, number eight, Lotta Bendig, with number nine, Jule Schwarz, and with number ten, Kati, Katrin Grünewald. On the right-hand side, all covered in blue and white. The Italian under-21 woman team with number one, Giulia Bonovenga, with number two, Zoe Fiamen, with number three, Martina Barbagallo, with number four, Maria Zole Mon, with number five, Margarita Ponte Corvo, with number six, Agnes Derin, uh, with number seven, Stefania Stangi, Stagni, with number eight, Veronica Mazanti. The game will start within the next few moments. Uh, the German team is a very young one. The youngest of them all is Nina Hachenburg. She only turned, f she will turn 15 this year. She was born in uh, 2004. And uh, the oldest player on the pitch is. Uh, Annika Knöpfel and uh, Jule Schwarz together with uh, Agnes Derin or Derin uh, all born in 1999 so they will be out of the under 21 class uh, after next year so now going for the sprint start Grünewald against uh, number one from Italy Julia Bonvenga but uh, both foul has been called by the referee, so Germany will take the first possession of the game. Let's see if they can score within the next 60 seconds they have on the shot clock. I assume both teams will build up slowly, getting to know the other team, what they try to do, and then create some good shot opportunities. Grunewald on the left-hand side, two players inside working on the Italian defense. Hilke Vogt and uh, Hanna Kunz. Schwarz. Schwarz on top of the key. Passes it to Grünewald. Inside to Knöpfel and Knöpfel puts it in. She puts the first goal on the scoreboard for Germany. So now Germany won, Italy nil. They scored uh, in the first minute of this semi-final. Annika Knöpfel from PSC Coburg in Germany. On this team there are three guys, uh, three girls of uh, PSC Coburg. Um, Nele Schmalenbach, Jule Schwarz and Annika Knöpfel. And now Germany has to play defense and a good deflection by the paddle of Grünewald. Vogt, Kunz on the right hand side, Grünewald, they have to watch out for a blocking foul there, advantage has been given to Germany, haven't seen the foul, Bendik puts up a shot but a deflected shot by Italian paddles, so Germany with the first corner of the game. Uh, 
Kunz will take the corner on the right hand side. Knöpfel and Vogt still working inside. Kunz. Bendik. Kunz. Bendik. Bendik over the middle. Kunz on the left hand side puts up a shot, but another great save by Italian defender by the name of uh, Margherita Ponticorvo. The youngest player on the Italian side is uh, number seven, Stefania Stanghi. She was born in 2003. German team a bit younger in uh, total age compared to the, to the Italian team. Bendig to Grunewald. Bendig. Grunewald, but deflected by Italian pedal. Italy is playing with a 3-1 defensive strategy. One girl or one woman up on top trying to deflect the ball with a paddle and maybe they have the chance then to go on a fast break. Germany will do their best not to play any stupid passes. Get up in front and Kati Grunewald makes it two for Germany. So now Germany with two and Italy remaining with only one goal. Goalkeeper had his paddle on that one, but she was not able to keep it out. It, def it was deflected, went on the top bar, and then just fall into the fell into the back of the net. Number two, Zoe Fehrman. And number three, on the right hand side, number one, Julia Bonvenga. But the ball has been stolen by Jule Schwarz, and now the fast break is running. Grünewald. Jule Schwarz. Jule Schwarz and Annika Knöpfel with their third selection for the German under 21 women's team. They played their first tournament at. Um, the French uh, European Championship in 2017 in uh, Saint-Mer. Number nine with the ball, pass it to number two, Zoe Feynman. Feynman brings it up for the Italian team. Let's see what they can build off this possession. Five minutes into the first half of this game. Shot put up, but a deflected shot. Now a substitution has been made. Nela Schmalenbach joins the German under-21 side on the pitch. Bendig. Bendig and uh, Schmal Grüne Grünewald uh, became uh, youth champions this year on German championship. German championship. So both of them could also play in the under-16 class. Kunz in the middle puts up a shot, but another great defensive effort by Italian Pavel. Otta Bendig and uh, Katrin Grünewald, both out of uh, team from uh, Duisburg. Erster Meidericha MKC. Schwarz, Bendig on the left hand side. Back to Schwarz. 
defender tried to get his hands on the ball there, but uh, ball recovered, possession recovered by Anna Kunz of uh, the KSV Havel Brüder. Kunz now playing outside the Italian defense on the right hand side. Jule Schwarz brings it up. Kunz. Achenburg loses the ball, had a hard time catching it. And now the Italian team has another chance to score. Fast break is running, pedal foul call for Nele Schmalenbach. Had her pedal a bit too close to Julia Bonavenga's hand there. Deflected the pass. Number eight, Veronica Mazanti on the left hand side. Now in the middle. Attacked by Annika Knöpfel. And the ball has been stolen by Knöpfel. Takes a long shot and puts it into the back of the net. Stayed confident on that one. Number three, Annika Knöpfel. Puts the score up even further. Now the new game score is 0 for Italy, 3 for Germany with the two minutes left of playtime in this first half of the semi-final woman under 21 class. Bonovenga back to Barbalgo. Captain of the team on the left hand side now, Agnes Deran. Derin. Derin on the left hand side taking the corner. Von Wenger. Deflected. Von Wenger was pressured on that pass. So it was a bit off and uh, Kati Grunewald took advantage of that but immediately lost the ball to an Italian opponent. So Ital Italy will stay in possession for the last minute of this game, for the last minute of this half, I'm sorry. Number seven in the middle loses the ball as she wanted to throw it. Katrin Grunewald. Grunewald getting pushed. Uh, and deflected, pa deflected pass by Julia Bonvenga stopped the fast break on that one. Martina Babalgolo. Number three on top of the key. On the right hand side, number one puts up a shot. But deflected by German pedal, rebound by uh, Mazanti. Mazanti tried a shot, but deflected by a German pedal. And now a bad pass has been made by Hilke Vogt, but Lotta Bendig recovers the ball, makes another good save for the German side. And now that will sum it up for the first half. We'll be back within a few minutes. Let's see if Italy can score in the second half and uh, put the score closer or if Germany will put some other goals on the score sheet to make the gap between the, them and Italy even bigger. It's half time break and here you can see the stat sheet Total shots on target, uh, to uh, seven ta has, have been taken by Germany. They made three out of them and three of the total shots that Italy took that went on target did not went in, did not go in. Ball possession, bit of an advantage there, 56% for the German team. 
all of the shots that Germany took went on target. So uh, they are very, uh, very high position on those German shots. They're all very good shooters. The halftime break gives me a chance to thank our sponsors. At first, uh, Coimbra, Coimbra City Council, the University of Coimbra, the Fluvia, Club Fluvial de Coimbra, Hugo Santa Casa and the European Sports. And last but not least, uh, the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth. Thank you all for making this happen. Second half of this semi-final game between uh, Germany and Italy under 21 women was just about to start. 35 seconds left of half-time break. For Germany, Nele Schmalenbach will take the sprint start and on the Italian side, I think it will be number one, Julia Bonvenga. So let's see who can win the ball and win the first possession for their team. Green on the Italian side, now both sides are on green light and the game has started. Refs blown the whistle and Nele Schmalenbach is going strong for the ball and another boat foul has been called. A very harsh boat foul by Bonvenga. I think she will get a green card after that. Time has been stopped by the referee. They are having a talk with their staff. No card will be given, okay. Oh, they've gave, given a green card to Bonvenga for that harsh boat fall. So now Schmalenbach, Bendik, Kunz. Kunz puts up a good shot, but a great save by the Italian goalkeeper. Kunz still desperate, trying to, so, trying to score her first get goal in this semi-final. Schwarz. Kunz. Schwarz, Annika Knöpfl and Hilke Vogt still working very hard inside that Italian defense. They are playing a bit, a kind of two, two defensive style. Anna Kunz tried a shot there, deflected and went out. So Germany will have another 60 seconds to build up another shot. Schwarz, Schmalenbach, the PSC Kobo connection. Kunz, another shot by Kunz, and finally she puts it into the back of the net. After many shot attempts, Hannah Kunz finally finds her way into the back of the net. So now, the new game score is four for Germany, still none, go none goals scored by Italy. So let's see if they can put their first goal on the scoreboard. Sub substitution has been made for Germany, now Nina Hachenburg working on the right hand side against the Italian offender. 
Number eight, Veronica Mazanti took a shot there, but could not make it. Corner has been taken on the left-hand side. Mazanti. Back to Mazanti. Darren. Babalo. Grunewald pushed by her defender, but stays, stays in possession. Long pass to Hilke Vogt. Germany now has a new chance to build up their attack. Bendik takes a long shot, but deflected by Bon Venga. Bon Venga to the left hand side. Terren. On pitch number one. Uh, Great Britain is leading in the under-21 men's class against a French team, 5-2-2. Two, two. Long shot has been taken. Bendik gets her pedal onto it, tries to clear it out for the corner. Went a bit short there, but now Italy takes their next corner on the right-hand side. Maybe more luck on the right-hand side. Plays it out to number two, Veyman. Ponte Corvo. Bonvenga. Went over the goal. Would have counted as a field goal. Schwarz. Hachenburg. Kunz, Schmalenbach, now uh, Hachenburg is going in on the Italian defense, trying to create a gap for her German teammates, maybe uh, they can create something of this, 25 seconds left on the shot clock. Long pass to Schmalenbach, chip pass. Schmalenbach underneath the goal, passes it to Hachenburg. Knöpfel on the right-hand side. And just a bit too low. She shot that one on the bottom bar. And out of that, and of that, it went out of bounds. Hachenburg pressuring her, the offender. Von Venga. Darren. Feyman. Von Venga. Darren. Puts up a shot and it went wide. So now Germany will have their next possession. They can put another goal on the scoreboard. Let's see what they can do. What they have left in their tank for this semi final. Schwarz brings it up the field. Three and a half minutes left to play in this second half. Let's see if Italy, what Italy can do. Maybe they can close up the score. It will be hard, but everything is possible. Schwarz, Kunz, back to Schwarz, great pass. Timeout has been given. Ball went out of bounds. Germany will take another corner, Kunz on the right hand side.
Buns, top of the key, Schwarz. Grünewald, wieder auf Schwarz. Schwarz, Grünewald, Von Wenger. Two and a half minutes left. It will be a hard time for Italy. Let's see if they can close the score up. But as this game is going for almost eight, 19 minutes right now, I can't see any chances for Italy to tie that score up. They are still desperate to find their way into the back of the net since almost two full half times haven't scored yet. Nina Hachenburg tried her luck there with a long shot, hit the top bar. Anna Kunz. Schwarz. Sorry, Bendik. Bendik. Grünewald. Bendik. Kunz. Schmalenbach just hit the top bar. A bit unlucky there. Nele Schmalenbach. Illegal holding is called by the referee. We are in the last minute of this semi-final game. Let's see what Italy can put up. Bonvenga hard time, had a hard time there catching the ball. Herrin loses the ball due to a bad pass. Hannah Kunz. Germany with a new possession. Let's see if they can score another goal and put the score up even higher. Vogt. Ah, good effort there by Hilke Vogt, the captain of the German team, to get the ball. Had to be quick on that one because the pass was not perfect. So now Italy is going with a man-to-man -man press. Grünewald. Ten seconds. Vogt. Grünewald puts it in for another time to end the game. Now Germany wins. The final score is 5 to 0. Germany over Italy. Semi final. It's decided. Germany will move on to the final game of under 21 women's class. And uh, Italy, the Italian team, will have the chance to take the third seed and get on the podium in a match. I assume it will be against the Spain national team. Und damit haben wir das erste deutsche Team, das an diesem Tag ins Finale einziehen wird. Die U21 Damen haben es geschafft. Sie besiegen Italien im Halbfinale und jetzt werden sie wohl gegen die Damen aus England treffen. Ich wünsche weiterhin viel Erfolg und viel Glück für unsere deutsche Teams und ähm, ich freue mich bereits darauf, sollte ich äh, das Glück haben, diese Spiele auch gleichzeitig kommentieren zu dürfen. Euch allen noch einen schönen Nachmittag, ähm, viel Spaß bei den weiteren Spielen und ähm, weiter auch von zu Hause aus vor dem Bildschirm für Deutschland hoffen und äh, die Finger kreuzen. Bis dahin, vielen Dank fürs Zuhören. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye.
uh, also in, in pitch number two. So we have Great Britain uh, against Germany in this afternoon final of the women under 21 European Global Championships going to 2019. Between Germany and Great Britain will be the same final as the last European and also the same final as the last World Championships. Great Britain are the current world and European champions and uh, Germany are the silver medalists. So it will be a great, great uh, match this afternoon between uh, the current the first and second place of the European and World Championships. It is afternoon around the five o'clock. And next we'll have the semi-finals of the men's under 21. Men's under 21 uh, semi-finals. Pitch number one, Spain versus Italy. And pitch number two, Switzerland against Germany. We'll be at uh, half past 12, so we we'll still have uh, 15 minutes before the next match.
great game. Did you see it? On just there. Estamos a poucos instantes do início das semifinais da categoria Sub-21 masculinas. Os jogos que vão opor a equipa de Espanha contra a Itália no campo 1 e da Suíça contra a Alemanha no campo 2. Vamos começar às 12h30. The semi-finals of the men's under 21 uh, games. This uh, European uh, Polo Championships uh, Coimbra 2019 pitch number one will have Spain against Italy and pitch number two Switzerland against Germany. The winners will play the final this afternoon. Welcome here to pitch two at the European Canoe Polo Championship. Here we have the semi final of the men's under 21 category Germany versus Switzerland. Simultaneously on pitch one, we have the other semi final with Spain versus Italy. These are running at the same, two si same time. And this game will start at 10 past one local time so we've got a couple of minutes and then we'll get going a bit of background for these two teams so germany in the last in the second group stage of this tournament comfortably comfortably coming through with three wins defeating every single other team in the group switzerland on the other hand coming through in second place with one win one draw and one loss getting through on uh, goal difference. So Germany here, definitely the favorites. And there you have the players for Switzerland on your screen. And there you have the players for Germany.
Only one green yellow card to players on both teams. Only one for Switzerland, three for Germany. Of course, three yellow cards for a single player in a tournament it does mean they'll miss the next game. But that seems to be unlikely to be an issue. Given this is a semi-final, they can only receive one yellow card individually in this game. So they cannot hit their three yellow card limit until we hit the final. So they're safe on that. So as I said, game starting at 10 past. So uh, table and the referees just getting themselves ready. The supporters here, overwhelmingly German. After all, Germany do have a team in every single category. Switzerland, on the other hand, only having a, not having a men's, oh, sorry, a women's senior team. Germany are a very strong polo nation in the uh, world last year. They came first in senior men's, senior women's and women's under 21. Coming second in men's under 21, this team. So narrowly missing out on getting all four gold medals. And here we go. One minute until the game begins. While we're waiting, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, entities that made this possible. The tournament is organized by the Portuguese Canoe Federation and the European Canoe Association. And also the facilities here provided by the Coimbra City Council, University of Coimbra, which you can see some of the buildings at the top left. And the Club Vivial de Coimbra, the local canoe club here, which we're using their facilities. And our sponsors, Hogar Santa Casa and Upin Sports, who have supplied all the goals for this competition. And finally, the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth. And here we go, teams being asked to line up. Sprinters for Germany, number 10, Leon Conrad. And for Switzerland, number three, Dario Stern. And the drums in the sports are going. And here we go. Sprinting for the ball. It's looking pretty close. Switzerland may be edging it. Just getting to the ball first. And he dives onto the ball. And yeah, that is number 10 for Germany. Hitting number three for Switzerland in the body. So Switzerland get the kayak tackle and start with possession. It is now up to them as to how they want to attack the German side. Driving two of their players in the German defense, seeing if they can find a gap. And here we go. Sight being rebuffed quite strongly there. Germany choosing to squash a lot of their players together. Quite a tight defense, but it's working. Anytime any of those Swiss players coming in, being able to send a player out each time to stop each one coming in. The other alternative also being for Switzerland to pass the ball into number one or number five there who should be able to get an unobstructed shot, just one one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Which is exactly what they're going for here. But that keeper there, number seven for Germany, Tim Renek Kirchkov, solving that perfectly. And we have an illegal push there, giving Germany the ball. And they've gone for the break, but it's taken them a bit too long to get that pass ready. Switzerland, therefore, fully back and able to set up their defense before Germany can bring the ball up. And here, Germany with their first turn of the match. And you can hear, hopefully in the background, the German supporters drowning out anything else. Here they go again. Number six driving his way in. Another shot. Coming off the bar, it was deflected, but it's still on the pitch. Yes, you see, yeah, it was deflected, yep. Referees there just checking. Yeah, there you go. And Germany gets to have another go. Hmm? 
Anyway, we go, Germany, and that's an illegal paddle foul in favour of Germany. So Germany here, bringing in the next attack. See if we can get it a bit more successful than last time. They go for the shot, deflected by the defender there. Or not. I must have seen that wrong. Goal throw there for Switzerland. As you can see, both teams racing to get back. The speed of these teams, meaning that if they let the other team get back before them, you really do risk them getting a, an open shot on goal. These teams can quite comfortably pass three quarters or even the full length of the pitch. And let's see how the Swiss attack works this time. They've gone for the same thing, getting two players in deep within the German defence, trying this time to create a split with the German defence managing to get around them. You can see here, one and five trying to work their way in between their corresponding six and eight for Germany, trying to force a split. And you can see number one on the top covering that gap. And here you go, number one having to force to choose. And they go for the shot over the top. Switzerland managed to hold onto the ball only just, and then a, a loose pass there gives it to Germany. Germany going for the break. You got one and ten leading the way. Four for Switzerland will be given a choice. He will not. He will have to choose one of these. Goes to the shot, and now that is unfortunate. Really nice for Germany. The two breakers there forcing the defenders to choose between them, and in fact, he hardly he hardly had the opportunity to choose at all. And unfortunately, the shot just hitting the bar and not quite completing. And here we go, Germany going again. Number one staying out, providing that safe pass. And they really are doing some serious damage to this Swiss defence, and there it is! There it is! A goal there, I believe, by number seven for Germany. René Kirchhoff, yeah, there we go. Beautiful goal. Really punishing the, the Swiss defence there, pushing them right in. Able to get some serious speed nice and close to the goal before they take the shot. And of course, the closer you get, the faster you get, the harder it is for the goalkeeper to predict where that ball is going to go and get that paddle in the way in time. Switzerland here trying to, to, to do their equivalent. Will it be enough? And getting that pass into the player in between. It's a nice move, but the Germans just able to put two paddles in the way, which is more than you want. And Germany again, pacing their way up, trying to outnumber the Swiss at this end. Going, uh, and that's unfortunate. A pass blocks as it tried to get between the two runners. And Switzerland now for their turn. They have all five of their team up. Only two Germans stuck in between them and the goal. And they go for the shot. And that is a goal. Number three for Switzerland, Dario Stern. Stirring there that you really do need to get back as fast as you possibly can. Because if the other team does beat you to it, they will break and they will outnumber you and they will get a goal. We are a quarter of the way through this game and it is now one all Switzerland, Germany. And we shall see how this game goes. As I was saying before, Germany have so far done better in this tournament, but that's no reason why Switzerland can't teach them a lesson or two. Germany here taking their time. They have a full 60 seconds to take each shot. A shot clock is in use in this sport. So they've got 20 seconds left of the shot clock now. That's possibly one, maybe two more attempts. 15 now. And they're going to pass it around. They're going to look for this gap. Maybe pass it to eight. And number two takes the shot. And that deflects off the paddle onto the post. And there, the Swiss paddler being, Swiss goalkeeper being pushed off the pitch while holding the ball, giving Germany another corner. And of course, a reset shot clock and another 60 seconds. Thank you for that, George. Just to put some context on this game, obviously very, very exciting. We don't want to detract from the action, but at one all, three and a half minutes more left in the first half, a lot to play for. Germany playing for a place in the final. They have been finalists in the men's under-21 category.
on the last three championship occasions, losing out to Great Britain. Great Britain out of this competition, their new team not able to maintain the record of their predecessors, not surprisingly becoming a very tough category to replace the team. The Swiss team here, hoping to move up this entire team to their senior men's category next year with a serious intent here of winning this competition. Switzerland under-21s never done better than sixth at a championship, playing here for a place in the final. So the passion of both these teams, big, big opportunities for both, big things at stake. The Swiss work rate in that defence, absolutely driving to try and keep Timo Fussel out of the defence. The Germans trying to force a way in. That's the goal, number 10 for Germany, Leon Conrad. His father, a former gold medalist at European Championships. <laughs> Switzerland now, can they reply? They've definitely been well drilled. They've definitely practiced this scenario. They definitely want this. Plenty to play for, a one goal game. Two minutes and more in this half remaining. 30 seconds on the shot clock. The Swiss taking the time to discuss tactics to set up the next play. Quite superb, driving forwards. Swiss a very strong pedigree at championships. In the European Championships in Saint-Omer. The Swiss senior men's team came fourth. Very high position, illegal use of the paddle there. I think we're getting a green card. Certainly we are. These cards can tot up. German team, have to, if they get three green cards, the fourth green card offence is a yellow. If the player that conceded that green card gets another green card offence, he will be sent off. This is where the card counting system means the discipline of the teams has to be so good. It resets the shot clock. Another slight bonus for the Swiss team. And they come attacking. Very, very clever play. Looking away. Can they pass the ball inside? Defence has really been the strong point of German polo for probably 30 years. They're no exception here. Very well drilled. Very hard working German defence. Many of these Swiss players well known to the German. They play in the German Bundesliga. These players all knowing each other very well. There's a huge camaraderie in canoe polo. That camaraderie right now on the back burner as these two canoe polo teams step toe to toe. Substituting quickly the Swiss, changing their attack for their defence. The German team passing the ball around. One minute remaining in this half. 35 seconds on this shot clock. Look at the drilling in this. You can see the hours on the training pitch with this. The pass is absolutely firing from hand to hand. These are big men, but they play the ball as if it's a tennis ball. They really do. Superb handling. Superb save from Werner there in the Swiss goal. Puts it out. Shot clock and game clock both on 36 seconds now. Clearly, as we've seen before, the tactic of setting up a one-shot attack being applied by the Germans. They will run the clock down on, say, 20 or 15 seconds. The movement will start, the set play. There will be a drilled set play here. Can we see the pattern of it before the Swiss do? Far side to the left. Is there a pass inside? Oh, and a weak pass cost them, but there's only six seconds on the clock. Is it enough? The shot's there, but there's nobody going to get to that in the time. And we're away to half time. Did they have chance to pass and shoot? Did they have chance to dribble and shoot? We'll never know. They took the one shot option. Some half time stats coming for us now, but there we look at the University of Quimber on the hill. A beautiful city, Quimber. If you've never been, I strongly urge you to visit. And here we have the match stats. So, pretty much the story of the game. Ball possession, 56 to Germany, 44 to Switzerland. And the shots, slightly more to Germany, slightly more shots. And they have the slight lead. No surprises there. 
One green card to Germany there, not showing on the stats there. They'll catch that back up as we enjoy the view of Quimber and the footbridge. And absolutely magnificent. The University of Quimber at the top of the hill there with the clock tower, the oldest university in Portugal and seat of previous kings of the country. As you can see, all the buildings have historic value here. Very few new buildings, certainly almost none in the centre of the city. It's absolutely stunning. The coaches, the coaches having final words with their team, bringing them in, getting them to take water on board. Remember, this is a semi-final being treated, of course, as you would expect by these teams as a final. But everyone who has experience here will be aware, no matter how big, no matter how hard, no matter how tough this game is, they have another game to play. If they win, they play the final. Crucial, obviously, a gold medal. Every athlete steps on the plane or steps on the bus hoping for a gold medal. But the tough job, if you lose this game, is spending the two hours in between getting ready for a game that puts you on the podium in first place or sends you home empty-handed. Really, really tough time for coaches there. Both of them won't even be thinking about that. They're thinking about how they can get the next 10 minutes to be the polo that they've dreamt of. This is what we've trained for. This is where we put in the winter work. This is what February mornings on your lake or your river are all about. Okay. Yeah, on the adjacent pitch, we can look across. It's half time in the other semi final. That's tied at zero between Spain and Italy. That's how close it is. Tiny margins are going to decide these games. This is what we come for. This is sport. There is no question this is going to be a tough category. The team's still in it. Spain, Italy, Germany, Switzerland. Ten minutes each to decide their fate at this championship. Tonight, these young men will be out on the town, win or lose. But I tell you which colour medal they want hanging around their neck when they're out in those bars in the beautiful city of Quimbra. They want a gold medal. They will still have a chance. Right now, there's 10 more minutes of hope and expectation and dreams. Here we go. Lined up both semi-finals at the same time, as you would expect. Here we are. Teams eager. And we go. Go, go, go. A charge start forwards. The first small battle of the half is won for speed by Germany. Oh, and as the ball is picked away, that hurts. Stern thought he'd got a hand to that ball. The referees, oh, a slow call there. But as I was about to say, the speed battle won by Germany, but the skill battle on that occasion run by the Swiss. They end up with the ball. Very close now. I can imagine that half-time team talk. We win the ball, we get possession. The next thing we do is score. Coach doesn't care if it takes one minute or ten, but they need to get a goal here. Oh, that's outstanding. Kirchhoff in goal. He's been tipped to be the next national team goalkeeper in the senior category. If he's got to step into Robert Pest's shoes, he's going to have to play some big plays like that. And that was an outstanding save. He's put his team back onto the front foot. And that's not just the front foot. Beckman, Arne Beckman absolutely slammed that in the net. That gives Germany a three goal to one lead. The combination play, a superb save at the back, a superb finish at the front. These teams can pass the ball the length of a pitch in the blink of an eye and that was just awesome. And we can, I don't know if you could hear that on the mic, but Spain to Italy zero is the outcome on pitch one. Not the outcome, the current score. So should these scores scan, it will be Spain, Germany in the final. But we still have nine minutes left on this pitch. The Swiss must not panic. You can see they know that. One goal at a time, they must bring this game back. They need to get the first one. And this is when the goalkeepers earn their salt. Kirchhoff in goal. He's gonna, he knows he's going to have to make some saves. That's what he expects. A big game goalkeeper. He wouldn't have it any other way. His team are going to have to rely on him. And I'm sure they can. He's a big, strong guy. Plays in the German Bundesliga. Absolutely 
a top class goalkeeper at any level and here at under 21s outstanding the Swiss moving the ball well confident you can see them trying to direct traffic there is Stern he's played very well but he needs something they need to get something going together either one enormous moment of brilliance or more likely one clever pass but no the ball drops loose and German machine just thrust forward options everywhere that's how fast they're broken he's got a choice of passes that's some team play the German intent here has been to win this championship and they're showing it right now oh look at this now Germany confident long passing that two goal leads looking good to them very very nice club players across the world will be watching this just wishing their team could make passes like this 20 passes to this team in open play just nothing all hand to hand and make it look so easy that ball the size of a soccer ball quite grippy but still the way these guys pass it around you could think it was a golf ball Oh, out for a corner again Germany will be very happy to keep getting corners shot clock resets run that clock down seven minutes a two goal lead as that creeps down the clock becomes more and more friendly to the German team more and more harsh on the Swiss tight on the other pitch Spain still leading but two goal to one the Italians have pulled a goal back we'll focus on to this game the Germany just pressing this they're waiting here they don't care if they're here until the end of the game with a two goal lead if they can stay here until they score so much the better they are absolutely merciless they'll be quite happy to keep drawing fouls keep drawing corners keep drawing corners and keep things just moving along we can we and this seems to be the pattern at the moment it will very much suit it will very much suit the German team if they can stay up this end again no mistakes the handling here absolutely premium quality they don't want to make a mistake and so far it doesn't look as if they're going to Germany and another shot but this time it blocked down stays in play there's been a legal tackle on the Swiss player they've been camped in their own goal for two minutes but this is half a chance they've got a break Kerkhoff's made it back to goal can the Swiss score past the premium quality goalkeeper no that was a superbly crafted chance for Hug they had three men breaking they played it just right but Kerkhoff was a match for it that could be the defining moment that could be the stamp that takes Germany to the final because that was a beautifully crafted opportunity from the Swiss and Kirchhoff just stepped up did what he does and in the bar tonight be saying yeah that's what I do I keep you in the game guys beautifully done oh tried a snapshot but underneath that might have had a chance if it had been on target it's just been touched out I think that was going low so the Swiss quite fortunate to stay on the offense looking at Kirchhoff from here the body language he looks so confident if these defenders look back and see him like that it would fill me with hope I would think he can save anything that's what you want from a goalkeeper and he's got big strong defenders in front of him the Swiss here driving through there's been some fantastic play that last break from them was truly exceptional they're struggling now the Germans have got this they've worked very hard the Swiss they have to keep working hard if they want to stay in this game they can't make a mistake of all the teams in the world that would pick up on loose ball and punish you it's this German team and they've done it again though again superbly worked inside for Rugley but no product there's been some outstanding pieces of attack from the Swiss here they're finding their plan which is to get a man inside for a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and again and again just this German defense pushing them out to the six meter Germany very very confident in this defense and why wouldn't they be it's brought 
That is a long shot. Very, very powerful. Stern, but it goes over the top and that plays into the hands of Germany now. They get the ball back. They'll be in no hurry. 3.17 on the clock. Let's see how long is left. Again, it's a Swiss press. Congratulations to them. They take a risky strategy. They have no real options now. It's a semi-final. It doesn't matter. You have to go for this. Goal difference is not important here. But Germany absolutely relentless and this is punishing. That hurts. It's punishing. That is superb play. Finished by Rike, but actually that's a team effort. Completely a team effort. The pass is over the top. The mileage covered by the sprinters. Outstanding. Now, Switzerland know that they've really got an uphill battle here. Three minutes and three goals behind. It's almost impossible. But almost impossible in a semi-final, you have to make work. This is it. They're going for it. They need something here. They have nothing to lose. Whether they lose this by three or four or five does not matter. They roll the dice and they press forwards. They will not give up. Why would they? There is still a place at stake in the final. They know it's tough, but they don't want to save anything. There's still a chance. Referee giving two players cards, one from each team. Germany taking the safety option. I don't blame them of substituting their player off immediately so he has no risk of being sent off. I think the Swiss have no option but to keep what they consider their strongest five players on the pitch to try and score a goal that at least gives them a window of opportunity back into the game. The work rate going on. Look at it down there between Rugli of S Switzerland and in that instance Conrad of Germany just fighting boat to boat with each other, carrying at its very best. Arne Beckman has been sent off. Germany are down. Germany have gone down. He was a second green card for Arne Beckman has seen him off. Germany down to four now. It's a power play yellow card, so they will come back to five if Switzerland score. But could this be the window of opportunity that allows Switzerland back in the game? This German defence is playing as if there's six of them, never mind four. It's outstanding, the effort. They've won the ball back. They're breaking. Most teams would be happy to close this down. This German team's trying to score with four against five. Never satisfied. It's an amazing achievement. Now they've realised we're only four. We'll just take a minute off the clock here. Magnificent skill. So strong in the kayak. So strong on the ball. They're looking around. They're big. They're confident. Obviously now, as I mentioned at halftime, the clock has completely become their friend. Every second that goes off the clock, they see the final coming closer. And that is just the final name in the coffin. Rene Kirchhoff, he's kept them in the game in goal. He's made some magnificent saves. They go down to four players. And what does he do? Steps up and scores a goal. You've got to feel it for the Swiss. The Germans are 5-1 up. They're down to four. They're still scoring. I think this German team have had a magnificent game. I think the Swiss have played incredibly well, but they have come up against a team that seems intent on taking home a gold medal. They will find out who they meet at the end of this game, but this German team has been magnificent in this game. Kirchhoff particularly, superb. The odd slip, obviously a discipline error with somebody being sent off, but basically faultless. They look incredibly strong. Ball's gone out for a corner. The ball boy returns it. We come into the last minute. Card counts on the screen, showing that teams have to be careful. Germany, the line of three is like a line of 13. They are so strong. No gaps for the Swiss. They can't get anything happening. Quite incredible the work that's been done since going down. Here we are. Here's half a chance. Oh, that's going to be a consolation, I'm afraid, for Rugli. But that was their plan. Find the ball inside and beat Kirchhoff. But now there's only 50 seconds remaining. Realistically, that's a consolation goal. It's well crafted. It's beautiful. They finally beat Kirchhoff to get it in the back of the net. But it's a too little, too late. Now we can all see the seconds counting down. Referees having a little chat about what the status is here. 
I'm not certain what the problem is, whether a player's come on early or whether there's been a mistake with the clock. I'm waiting to see. We'll bring you that information as soon as we have it. We have two very experienced referees here. Steve Watts from Great Britain and Danny Boyce from the Netherlands. Unusually talking, to be honest. They're referees who normally like to get it done and dusted. But here we go. Now, what's happening, everybody? Five on the German pitch. Referee Watts having a talk. Oh, it looks like there's been an illegal substitution. I'm trying to just count this. Really difficult for us here. We're seeing the pitches the same as you. We're seeing some of the body language. This is almost a shame for everybody. Yeah, that's an illegal substitution. That takes the Swiss down to four with 40 seconds to go. Andreas, that's a real shame because it means that this game will now just peter out. This game going to peter out, Germany going through. They know now that they've got this in the bag. I feel very sorry that the last 40 seconds of this game is just going to die. The Swiss know there's little or nothing they can do. The Germans know that. Everybody's just going to see this game out to the end. We'll stick with this, but while I can, I can tell you that the live stream on pitch one will be going to the golden goal period between Spain and Italy. We here will finish this game, of course, as you would expect. But if you want my advice, the live stream on pitch one is showing golden goal between Spain and Italy, senior men. Uh, sorry, under 21 men for who will meet this dominant and strong German team in the final. That's our game over. Germany five, Switzerland two. The scoreline, it doesn't flatter the Swiss. They played really well. They had some quite magnificent plays. I would say the outstanding player for Germany and their MVP was Kirchhoff. When he was called upon to make one-on-one -on -one saves when the game was close, he made them. And that turned it. That absolutely turned the game. There is no question about that. No problem at all. The next pitch on this next game on this pitch is Netherlands Germany in a group game MF senior men I'll hand back to George Long for that if we just take a quick look at the game stats they ended up 50 50 I think that tells a story not entirely of how dominant the Germans were defensively they were comfortable they could afford to not have the ball and they were murderous when they got on the attack as the teams clear the pitch and my new teams will be entering we will have the Netherlands Germany due to start at 10 past 1 Portuguese time. Superb performance from the German team. Really very, very impressive. We will be back with you in due course.
Starting on this pitch, pitch two at 1.10, we have Germany versus Netherlands senior men's group game in the group MF. Currently, Germany seeming entirely unassailable. They are the current world champions. They currently lead in this group by six points. Netherlands coming up close on two with two draws. And France 
on one point, and Poland again on one point. Of course, the problem mainly being here for Netherlands. If they want to hold their second place position and get themselves into a semi final, they must draw this game. At least. If they can successfully draw, this will this will put them Well actually no, it depends massively on France versus Poland. So France versus Poland. If they say either of those teams win, they will go up to four points. In which case the Netherlands must win this game to put them in second place. If either of those teams were to draw, if Netherlands if those two teams were to draw and Netherlands were to force a draw here, they would go up. If both those teams were to draw and Netherlands were to lose here, then it would depend on goal difference. At which point Netherlands would go up. Hmm? There you go, there's the numbers for Germany and the players. As you can see in the Europeans, two years ago they came second. But last year in Canada, this team did come first. And here we go. Teams lining up. Here we go. Teams lining up now. On the sprint, we have number four for Netherlands, Dylan Tuff. And for Germany, number eight. John Asveren, and here they come. Followed up closely. And they've gone to the ball, but Netherlands riding far too high, giving the ball to Jonas Vernon. And Germany start play. Here, Netherlands instantly going on the press. They are not, they are not playing defensively whatsoever. They really want to push this out. Of course, the advantage of a five-man press being that the slightest mistake by Germany here will potentially give Netherlands the ball. The Germans, however, not being known for their mistakes. As you can see, number six for Germany, Robert Pest, scoring that goal. I believe he's possibly the oldest person in the senior men's category, but not diminished at all by that. And here we go. Netherlands now for their counter-attack. Of course, the disadvantage to their five out earlier being, as I said, the slightest mistake by them as well. Germany get it past just as they did. Germany here choosing the more defensive three and one. Covering every single angle at which the Dutch try and attack. Dutch temporarily driving a short wedge there. Germany really having to work. Ge Netherlands bringing in this player, bringing in the shot, but it's not working. The rebound goes straight to Germany. Germany going for the break. And it's not to be. They're choosing to slow it down. Choosing to play safe. After all, they are already goal ahead. And that is a long shot there by Robert Best. Straight into the goal. Netherlands being punished there for not getting back fast enough. And on your screen, it is showing two green cards. Uh, that's just wrong. Uh, there are no green cards in this game. And here we go. Netherlands, hopefully trying to fight their way back into this game. As I said, for Germany, this may not matter quite so much. They are already ahead. There is nothing any other teams can do to push them out of first place. On the other hand, this means everything to the Dutch keeping their second place in this group will get them into the top four. 
dropping out. Forces them into fifth to eighth. Here we go. Netherlands managing to get the ball. German defence holding so far. And here we go. Again, another attack. Another trying to force the gap, but it's not working. Germany able to cover every single way the Dutch come in. Really flexible defence there. Trying to ride their way over the top. And again, force their way in. And here we go. Bringing the ball in. Trying to pass it to player underneath the goal. Trying to get that shot off. And that is holding. Netherlands get to keep the ball. Yeah, referee informing them. Ah, that was interesting. A Dutch coach there on the... You're trying to use the pontoon to shout at the players. We're being told to go away. Obviously, they must be behind their own team's goal line. And there we go. The free shot there. Bouncing off defenders. Paddle. They get another go on the rebound. Looking for the pass. Looking for the opportunity and not finding it. Having to reset back out. There we go. The Dutch having another go. And they're still working, still trying to find that gap. Germany's holding. Currently managing to put off every single Dutch attack coming in. The idea of this being the three pins, being able to work between each other, push off each other if needs be to hold the gap. Number two for Netherlands, trying to drive his way in. Trying to push out the German. And that is another holding in favour of the Netherlands. Giving them another free shot, but of course, in this time, Germany able to plug the gaps. And we have Jonas Veron in there, trying to fight his way in. It's not working. And that's a beautiful goal there. Number, number four, Dylan Tuff. Squeezing it past the goalkeeper there, Robert Pest. Robert Pest, having been on this team for quite a many years. Always been a solid goalkeeper. That is unlike him. But we shall see. Germany is still one goal ahead. And that's an illegal correct tackle in favour of Germany. Inside the six metres. They're choosing to take it from further out and let their attackers work the Dutch defence. Trying to find that gap. They think they found it. They're going for the drive. They're bringing the ball in. Trying to pass it into the player in the middle. It's intercepted by the Dutch. That's considered another illegal holding, another illegal tackle of some sort, a hand tackle. German given another go. Of course, that resets the shot clock, gives Germany another 60 seconds with which to make their attack. And here they come in again. Have they found that gap? Can they find it? And that's a shot deflected by the goalkeeper there. Number five for Netherlands, Remo van Vliet. And they get another go. Germany here with the corner. Took them a little while to realise that it was theirs. They need to go and get the ball. And here we go. I still got, still trying to work that defence. Number five for Journey, Jonas Gausselman. Having to fight there against two Dutch players. Squeezing it in. Trying to find a gap. The Dutch working really hard to plug every channel with which the Germans can use to bring that ball in. And they're just passing around, really searching, and they think they found one. They're going for it. It doesn't look like... Oh, and that works! A beautiful shot there by number eight for Germany, Jonas Vernon. Putting Germany 3-1 in the lead. As I said, Germany, the current world champions, would definitely be expecting to come out on top of this game. As I said, they have two wins so far in this group. Netherlands only with two draws. They have not won a game in this group. And here we go, Netherlands on their attack, trying to drive a gap again. The Dutch defence holding up really well. And here they go, Dutch with another run. Bring the ball in, looking for a gap. Germany trying to plug them all as they come in, try, having to really double up. Of course, the Dutch having five people able to bring in to this attack. Germany, because of the goalkeeper, only having four people to respond with. And that number difference is crucial. The Dutch attack here, trying to exploit that. 
trying to ensure that Germany has to send one person to every Dutch person, or possibly even better, two Germans to a Dutch player to allow the Dutch with a one-on-one -on -one shot on the keeper. And here we go. Unfortunately, a poor pass. Hands the ball straight to the Germans. And they get to return the favor. Bringing it up the pitch. And they're quite calm. They are, after all, two goals ahead. And there is no need to rush. Germany here again. Same tactic, and it's worked for them so far. Send two people in. Do some serious damage to the Dutch defense. Try and find a gap. As soon as they see it, assault it with all three of their players that are further out. Force the Dutch to make some really difficult decisions. Do they go for the player with the ball? Do they go for the, pers the player available with the pass who's got the speed? And that, that is a penalty. A paddle foul there on the shooter. Gives the ball. Yeah, and that will be a yellow card as well. Of course, a penalty in the new rules, meaning an immediate penalty to the player who committed the foul. And of course, penalties in the new rules as well. Get a goalkeeper if the goal was defended. So we shall have number five for the Netherlands, Remco van Vlelt. And number five for Germany, player fouled, Jonas Gausselman, one on one. Everyone else has to stay back. And that is saved! Remco van Vlelt. Vlet, sorry. Solid save there. He looks pretty happy with that. Unfortunately, that is not all. The yellow card now means the Dutch are playing a man down for the next two minutes. Only four of them on the pitch, the German five. And Germany will take full advantage of that. The, outnumber advan the outnumbering, as I mentioned before, would normally be four Dutch defenders trying to fight off the five German attackers. And that is punishing. That's another foul. Kayak foul in favor of Germany. Germany getting another go. And they are able to take that from well inside the Dutch six meters, but they choose to take it back out. Too many paddles in the way. And here we go, Germany again looking for that gap. They've got the numbers advantage. If they can get each Dutch player to commit to a German player, they will have a man or two free. And that is unfortunate. A slight intercept and therefore a sloppy pass, giving the ball back to the Dutch. And this time Germany deciding to really punish their advantage. They have the man advantage. They can put a player in goal while putting man marking every single one of the Dutch players. The Dutch here will really have to work. Now, Germany not really putting in the effort that you'd expect here. They seem almost relaxed. There we go, that's better. Putting a man on every single one. And again, being a bit relaxed, letting, letting each of the Dutch players get free. They're not putting on the pressure you'd normally expect of a five-up press, but again, the demand isn't there. They are two goals up. All they need here is to put the Dutch off enough that they can't get a shot. And that, yeah, that'll be a foul in favor of the Dutch. A lean there by Robert Pest, and he's racing back to get into goal. He has to set up fast. And the Dutch there trying to get the quick go, trying to get it while the goalkeeper's off balance, but being forced to take it from where the foul occurred. The Dutch here able to, two minutes is now up. Dutch back up to five. Number six of the Dutch coming back on. Dierk Webers. The Dutch here now will really have to work. We are 40 seconds from the end of this half. And of course the shot clock is now the game clock, so they don't need to worry about that. And they are two goals down. Of course we do have the second half after this, so we have a further 10 minutes. But they really do need to get something out of this. Of course, for them, the tactic is hold on to the ball until the very last few seconds. Take a shot with the last few seconds. Do not give the Germans an opportunity with the ball in the rest of this half. Ten seconds left to go. They go for the shot. It's deflected by a German defender. They're looking for the break. Number eight for Germany going out. He's slightly missing the ball, but he can leave it for one of them. There are three German players, the Dutch one, and it goes off the bar, and that is time. End of this first half. 
Germany three, Netherlands one, going into the second half. We have a three minute break for the players to rehydrate and have a quick chat with their coaches as to what they can work on for the second half. Ooh. Need to get my breath back there. So yes, as I was saying before, Germany here, the current reigning world champions. The Dutch, on the other hand, came sixth in the last Worlds. They've consistently come, and well, they came fifth in the Europeans last time. The Germans, on the other hand, came second. So coming into this competition, the Germans definitely the favorites. And they are definitely looking to win. In fact, in the last Europeans, sorry, in the last Worlds, Germany got three out of four of the available gold medals. Both senior men's and women's, and under-21 women's. Their under-21 men's team is already into the final hit. They'll be facing off against Italy in the men's under-21 final tomorrow. And so... Another minute left of this halftime period. Good time for you to uh, get a quick refreshment before we restart again. And you can see there the goal scorers, Jonas Vernon, Robert Pest, and Jonas Gausselmann for Germany. And Dylan Tuff for the Netherlands. Now with 10 minutes left to go, especially in a game like Canoe Polo, there is every possibility the Dutch Netherlands get themselves back into this game. It is definitely within their within their possibility to get a further two goals in this. But against the powerhouse that is this German senior men's team, that will be an uphill battle. And interesting statistics there. Germany with many more shots, corresponding with obviously their many more goals but a lesser percentage of those on target. The Netherlands, despite having the greater ball possession, unable to do as much with it. Germany able to capitalize on the ball possession they have to do some serious damage. Here we go, lining up for the sprint. We have three for Germany, Lennart Untervelt, and four for the Netherlands, Dylan Tuff, going in for the ball. Germany getting their first of the paddle. And yeah, here we go. Germany securing that first sprint, starting the game. And Germany now able to dictate play for at least the first 60 seconds. Of course, shot clock period, meaning they must take a shot within the first 60 seconds. The only things that reset it being them taking a shot or the Dutch committing a foul. And here we go. They're going in for another attack, driving their way in, trying to get that shot, trying to look to pass that ball to one of their players underneath the goal. Number five for Germany, Jonas Gausselmann has already scored one of their goals and he goes for another shot. And the rebounds not quite picked up from him. Dutch going for the break. Germany down to five because Jonas has lost his paddle. And on Dutch unfortunately having to slow down, not quite having the pace needed to get ahead of the German defense. And they bring the ball in, looking for what they can. And that was a shot and a half, but not quite enough. Did not was not on target. The Germans then not needing to get a paddle to it. And unfortunately, if that could have been on target, the Germans might have missed it. They did obviously not get a paddle to it. And here Germany then able to put the pressure back on this Dutch team. Here we go. Bring the ball, choosing to keep the ball back out, choosing to hammer the Dutch defense with the repeated runs in. Not even bring the ball in yet. They're not ready. Using up half the shot clock in preparation. Looking for that gap, looking for the opportunity. Each time deciding, no, too many paddles. Not a good opportunity. I'll let someone else. You can see the efficiency of this team. Everybody coming in, looking for that opportunity, not seeing it and getting straight back out. 
allowing the next player to run in after them. And there we go, number 10 now going for his run. And again, going for the shot there. Of course, we were really late on the shot clock there. But it deflects off one of the Germans, giving the Dutch the ball. And he goes for the shot, and that is a goal! Number two for Netherlands, Mats Pal, bringing the scoreline back a bit more even. The Dutch now only a goal behind with 7 minutes 50 on the clock. Of course, the two top teams going through. Netherlands here want a win or a draw to put them in the points match ahead. The French, and I believe, I can't remember the fourth team, but the French and someone else in competition in this group. And both of them very close to Netherlands on points. Netherlands on two, France on two, and the fourth team on one. And Germany bringing the ball in again, looking for that shot. Getting saved by the keeper. Remto van Vlet. Vlet. Solid keeping work there, keeping the Germans out. And, but unfortunately, rebounding back to the Germans and they're getting another go. That looks to be a kayak tackle inside the six meters, giving Germany a shot right underneath goal. The Dutch here will try and put as many paddles and as many bodies in the way of that shot. There you go. And told that's where they can take it from. He's looking for the shot. He's looking for the goal. Doesn't doesn't see it, chooses to pass it back out. Germany pressing the players in, realizing they're possibly overcommitted, backing some players back out. And here they go, really driving in there. Number one, Julian Pressure, putting on the pressure there in the middle. And they pass the ball across, looking for the shot, and he gets it! Julia, Julian Pressure there. As I've been saying before, Tactic being, can you get that player in a good position underneath the opposition goal and force? And then the question is, can you just get the ball to them? The score now, 4-2 in favour of Germany. Oh, wow! Germany being a bit complacent there. Letting Remco van Vliet underneath the goal. Pushed in by his teammate and just able to squeeze another goal. Bringing the goal scoreline back in line. 4-3, Netherlands only one off again. And that was the goal within about 20 seconds of the previous one. The Germany cannot afford mistakes like that if they want to win this game. Germany having another go. Looking to extend their lead. Bringing in the ball, going for the shot. And that was beautiful. The German offense there Really restricting the Netherlands players' ability to counteract that attack. And then Jonas Venen just coming in to finish it off. And there we go again. Let's see if the German defence does a bit of a better job reorganising itself. And there you go. The Dutch realising they're not going to get another quick shot again. So they're going for the properly worked slow goal. Problem is it uses up a lot of the shot clock. Only 30 seconds left now on that shot clock. They've used up half of it already. Dutch looking for a gap. They've got a gap on the far right. Germany has noticed. They're bringing the players back in to cover it. They're looking for the pass into the middle. Not seeing it, having to pass it back out to their attacker acting as cover. See if they can find another gap. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. They do not have long. 10 seconds, they go for the shot. It gets past the defenders and keeper, but unfortunately, bounces off the par and back in. Germany getting another go back on the uh, on the offensive, and now just under a quarter of this game left. Netherlands really will have to put some pressure on. I would not be surprised if Netherlands decide to start going five. That's a illegal kayak tackle. In fact, yeah, an illegal kayak tackle by the Dutch inside their own six meter line. Germany getting to take a shot from almost directly underneath the goal. The referee just explained to them they have to come move over a bit. 
They're not in the right position. A foul can be taken from wherever... Sorry, yeah, a free shot can be taken from wherever the foul occurred. So it doesn't need the ball to have been there. And he's going to take the shot, oh, and he chooses better of it. The three Dutch paddles again in the way. The German supporters pounding their drums just up the stairs from me. They know what they expect to come in. Germany bring the ball in, going for another attack. Looking for a gap, not seeing it, choosing to rotate back out. Sending the players back in. And Germany happy to wait out the length of the shot clock. 30 seconds left on their shot clock. They've already managed to draw out half of it. Germany sending more players in. Looking for the opportunity and they get the shot. And that's Robert Pest there. Oh, there's some confusion there. And a quick conversation there between the referees. The linesman said that was not a goal. We shall see what the outcome of that is. A three goal lead, the Dutch are very unlikely to get back from. A two goal lead is most definitely a possibility for them. And that is a disallowed goal. The score is still 5-3 in favor of Germany. And so, will be a corner for Germany. Here we go, and off we go again. Three minutes left on the clock. Germany with the ball. Germany going for another attack, bringing it in, looking for that shot, looking for that gap. Not quite finding it yet, passing it back out. Germany again, bringing it around the side, Look, seeing that gap, seeing the paddlers underneath the goal, looking for the opportunity. The Dutch successfully forcing them back out and unfortunately giving themselves a gap on the other side. Try Germany trying to exploit it and covering it their paddles. And that will be another corner for Germany. As you can see here, Germany attacking alternate sides, forcing the Dutch to commit from one side to the other. And of course, the idea being, if they're not paying attention, they'll overload themselves on one side, giving the Germans the opportunity to get another goal. There you go, forcing the Dutch over onto this side. They're slowly moving over. Number four there on the right, looking at the opportunity. Number eight, the Netherlands noticing it and backing off. Germany having another go. Starting in on the right this time. Forcing the Dutch players to come to them. Six down the front. There's a gap now on this left-hand side, but unfortunately the German players already moved out. And again, here we go. Bring the ball in. Looking for that pass to the player. That's a paddle foul in favor of Germany. Number six, they're getting a bit too close to number eight. And Germany choosing to pass it back out and use up that 60 second reset on the shot clock. Only two shot clock periods left in this game. Germany bring the ball in, getting past some of the defenders, getting right under the goal. The Dutch paddle is just able to save that. And that would be a character tackle in favor of the Netherlands. They want to go for this, and that is unfortunate, bouncing off the boat, and they get another go. Netherlands here, that break not working for them, taking them too long to get the ball away from their own goal line. And the Dutch here, having their turn at the attack. A two goal gap, one minute left on the clock. They could definitely get a draw out of this. They've scored a goal in less than 30 seconds before. Aim here for the Netherlands is not to get ahead of Germany in this group. That's not a possibility for them, but it's to get ahead of France and Poland. They are on two points in this group. France the same. Poland only on... Ah, oh no, actually, France and Poland both currently tying on one point. If France and Poland are to draw, they will be on the same number of points if, as Netherlands if Netherlands were to lose. And the five out here. Netherlands trying to put on the pressure. Paddle foul in favor of Germany. Sorry, paddle foul in favor of Netherlands. Netherlands losing the ball instantly to Germany. Germany going on the break, looking for the opportunity, probably going for the long shot. 
Yes, here it comes. And there we go, number three for Germany, Lennart Unterfeldt. With six seconds left to go on the clock, making it 6-3 in favour of Germany. And there is no way back for the Dutch here. They will get one last shot, and here it comes. And saved by the keeper, Robert Pest. And that will be the end of this game, of this men's senior Group F game between Germany and the Netherlands. 6-3 to Germany. The next game on this pitch will be Spain versus Netherlands in the senior women's category, Group D. And I'll hand over to my colleague. That game does not start until 1.50, so another 12 minutes.
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Martijn de Vries. I'm the commentating of this match. Game number 226, Spain against the Netherlands women. First of all, I want to have a big thanks to the Coimbra City Council, the University of Coimbra, the Club Fluvial de Coimbra, that's the local canoe club, Jaco Santa Casa, and we got Jupin Sports, the supplier of the goals for the competition also known as CPS, and of course the Portuguese Institute for Sport and Youth. We're now in group WD, and that means that this are the number one of this group can take it up to another group to go for a place in the semifinals. So only the number one of this group can go still through the semifinals. At this point, the Dutch team is in the lead. All the, all the, so they're with five teams in a group. They all played two, two games yet. The Dutch win two, the Spain win two and lost one. The, Swed the Swedish team played two games and only one win. Polish team, two games, one win. And the Danish team didn't succeed to win until maybe later today. Um, for the Spanish team, we got at number one, we got Nuria Ganes. We got number two, Laura Salmeron. Number five, Elena Nefaro. Number six, I Eva Ara. Number seven, Sonia Martinez. Number eight, Mar Androy. Number nine, Beatriz Carmona. And number ten, Aino Castro. And for the Dutch, we got number one, Charlotte Bakkers. Number two, Selina Dijkstra. Number three, Alicia van der Berg. Number four, Marike van Hofslot. Number five, Linda van Os. Number six, Marleen Wessels. Number seven, Sarissa van Veenendaal. And number eight, Divertje Bink. We will start the game pretty shortly. In about one minute, I think. Players are on the pitch already. All warmed up, ready for the game. The top scorers from the Spanish team is the number one, scored five goals so far this tournament. The number seven also scored five goals un until so far. And the number nine is the top scorer of the Spanish team, Beatriz Carmona. She scored seven goals so far. And for the Dutch team, we got Charlotte Bakkers with number one, scored eight goals. And we got with number three, we got Alicia van der Berg with five goals.
Coaches are preparing their team. With the Spanish team, there are some troubles for the number two. Laura Salmeron, she's out of her boat. I think she has a bumper that's not attached to her boat. And then you're not allowed to play the game. The coach is trying to fix it with some tape. And we're off for the, for the game with a sprint. It's Selena Dijkstra against the number one of Spain, Nuria Canas. And that was a pretty hard hit to the arm of the Spanish girl. But the ref don't thought that was a fault. So the ball's in possession of the Dutch. The Dutch team is looking for some opportunities in the defense line of the Spain. Nice pass to the center. Pass goes back. Dutch don't take any risks so far in this game. First half minutes is done. Dutch team is starting a little bit slow on this game. Nice pass, another nice pass. And number three goes through. She's going for that shot. Oh. With only 50 seconds on the clock, the Dutch need to go for a shot right now. Ball goes to number four. Number four passes back to number two. Another pass. I don't think the Dutch team is aware of the shot clock. But also the Spanish defender was not aware of the shot clock. But she made a stupid fall on the last two seconds on the clock. If she did not do anything, the Spanish team was in position of the ball. Both teams look a little bit nervous in the start of this game. Nice hard pass to number three. Number one, Charlotte Bacchus gets screened by the Spanish team. They all know that she's the top scorer of the team, but she loses the ball there pretty easy. Here comes the fast break from the Spanish team. Nice pressure on the ball. Number one. And there's a... Number six is totally free for the Spanish team. Uh, but also the Spanish team, they starting slowly on this game. They don't want to risk anything. The Dutch team already won two games. Spanish team only succeed to win one. And you need to win all the games, almost all the games to go as first in the group and to go fight for a place in the semifinals. So all the games in this group are really important. Here comes the Spanish number, number one almost through the defense line. And number five is going for the shot. Again, pass to number one. But there were a little bit too much pedals from the Dutch team in front. Here comes the fast break. Number two, Selena Dijkstra is going for it. One on one in the keepers. She got chased by two Spanish girls. But it was a nice defense action of the number six of, of Spain. She just put her both between the ball and the boat of Selena Dijkstra. Very nice defense of number six, Eva Era. This is something you want to see as a coach that your team is doing all the effort they can to get their ball back in position. We played three minutes so far in the first half of this game. No goals so far. Spanish start attack on the left side. Ball goes all the way to the right. Number one is looking for number seven. But they keep pedaling and pedaling. Little fault there by number one. Using, the, using her arms for the wrong position. Free shot is taken. Ah, oh, this is a sloppy mistake, but the Dutch do not take any advantage of that. They just stay put under the goal. They're playing a 1-3-1 defense. Spanish team starts again, ball goes to the end. Of, there can be a pass to number seven, but it was a little bit too difficult. Nice defense of the Dutch team to keep pedaling and pedaling. Don't give any space to your opponent. Yeah, that was a tricky, tricky thing from number four, the goalkeeper of the Netherlands. Just a little bit go forwards, so the number seven of Spain touches your boat. And that's not allowed in canoe polo. If you're the goalkeeper, you cannot be touched by a your opponent. Number seven is not really, really sharp now because the ball was just in front of her, but she totally missed it. Little bit of luck there for the Dutch team. 
Dutch team goes for the wave attack. And a nice shot for number one, Charlotte Bacchus. Immediately pressure of the number two, Celine Dijkstra, and so much pressure that the goalkeeper of the Spanish team decided to throw the ball out and give the ball just to the Dutch team. There goes number one, Charlotte Bacchus, dribbling. Tried to give the ball to number three, but it was nice defense of the Spanish team. There's a lot of crowd watching the game. Approximately two, three hundred people are here on the bench. There's come the shot for number two, but blocked by number seven of the Spanish team. Number seven, Sonia Martinez. There goes number three. Gives the ball to number one. Number one goes for the shot. Now gives back to number three and another shot. There was a little bit of space there in the defense line of the Spanish team with those two great shooters of the Dutch team. But also nice defense of the Spanish goalie. Another wave attack from the Dutch. They just keep pressing on the defense. Oh, this was a nice pass, but it just bounced on the boat. Here goes the fast break. Dutch team needs to go for five out. They're going to be full pressure on the ball. Spanish team is looking for some opportunities. Number nine is holding with her pedal a little bit on the boat, but the referee does not see that that was a fall. Dutch team keep pressuring. 35 seconds on the shot clock. Number seven is taking position underneath the goal. But good, very good position. The Spanish team is getting close to the ball. Number seven is there. She will not take the shot. But number five did. But she hits the bar. Number nine did. Still in ball possession. Oh, and number six is totally free underneath the goal. But nice, nice push of number eight. She keeps pressing. Keep that pressure on the ball and on the boat, that it will be difficult to pass. Very nice piece of defense there from Dibertje. You see all the effort the Dutch girls put in their defense. The ball goes all the way to their, their own half of the Spanish team. They're not taking any risks so far, both teams. Here's a little opportunity maybe for number seven. But again, a lot of pressure on the ball. 50 seconds on the shot clock. She tries a long dish shot and it just hits the bar. Balls for the Dutch team now. Two ladies are going substitute because this man-to-man -man defense is really, really... A lot of energy needs to be put in there. It's a really tough defense. It's very nice with Canoe Poly, you will, can have three substitutes and you can go for substitution every time you want. As many times as you want. Oh, that was a nice tricky shot for number seven. <laughs> Sarissa van Veenendaal, all of a sudden, was not really good opportunity, but it was a surprising shot. Goalkeeper was not paying attention enough. And this gives the score after eight minutes in the first half. One goal for the Netherlands and zero for Spain. This is just what one team needed to do to get a little bit more confidence in the game. Let's see if Spain can get a response on this. Spanish team is playing with two center girls. Three around it. A lot of pressure now. There's a little bit of opening now on the on the right side of the attacking side. But nice defense of number three, Alicia van der Berg. There's full pressure on her now, but she managed to shoot those two pedals. Charlotte Bacchus is free underneath the goal. Also, the Spanish team is now going man to man. No, sir, they are not. Charlotte Bacchus, if she can get that pass, she'll be alone under the goal. Nice pass in the hands, but it, again, it slipped through the arms of the number one, Charlotte Bacchus. Spanish team make a fall, holding on the arm of the Dutch lady. 55 seconds on the clock. 
Dutch team will wait. I think they will wait for the last 10 seconds to start with an attack of wave. Because you will not lose the ball at this time. If they manage to score, they can start a breaking with 2-0. Don't take too much risk here. Coaches look a little bit nervous on both sides. 25 seconds on the clock. Here comes the attack. Starting with the captain, number six, and immediately a shot. Wow, where to go? It bounced to two bars. I think the whole Spanish defense line thought he was going to pass to number three because number three is one of the best scorers of the Dutch team. So the Spanish team was caught by surprise. Dutch team will put pressure on the ball as soon as they can, but it's almost 40 seconds left in this game. So this, and this is a sloppy pass there. Dutch team gets it, and underneath the goal, uh, this was not nice how it, they took over the ball, but still there's a position, nice shot on the goal, and he hits it! Oh, in 50 seconds, the Dutch team scores two times. This will snap the Spanish team. With one second on the clock, and a green card given by number... I think it's given to number... Seven, I don't see it really good. So, one second on the clock. Gonna go for the long distance shot, but also this pass is not really good. So it was a pretty slow start of the, of the game. Teams were touching a little bit to each other, searching for some holes in the defense line. Don't, don't took too much risk. But you saw the last two minutes of the game, a lot of goals were scored. A lot of risk was taken. And this is a nice cheer up to start for the Dutch girls. And the Spanish coach needs to cheer up their girls because they need to win this game to go through for a second chance to go to the second semi-final. You can see some statics, six shots on the goal from the Dutch. Three goals, that's around 50%. They both got ball possession around 50%. Spanish team now is trying to search for a little bit other tactics to manage through the defense line of the Dutch. They need to search for an answer for that five out of the Dutch team. But I think the best start is just don't give the ball that easy to the opponent. So one half minute left. I'll back to you soon. See in the live stream the beautiful city of Coimbra. We've got four seconds remaining in the break. And then will we start the second half. The Netherlands are leading with three goals against the Spain. Let's see how the Sp Spanish team came out of their break. Got two green flags and here starts the sprint again. First sprint was for the Dutch. 
Now the Spanish girls a little bit faster. And managed to be at the ball a little bit earlier than the number five of the Dutch team. Spanish team is trying with the first attack. A lot of speed on the left side. Ball goes to the middle, goes to the right now. Not a really good position for the center. So a nice defense there for the Dutch team. 35 seconds on the shot clock. The Spanish keep pushing on the defense line. Nice pass to number seven on the right. Five on speed. Another nice pass right through the defense. But a nice save of the goalkeeper, Sarissa. This was a really nice passing of the Spanish team right through the defense line of the Dutch team. I think this gives them a little bit more faith. Spanish team miss coming again with a lot of speed with number two. It still finds it difficult to pass to the center. Another attack wave by number five. Passes to number nine, but she was not moving any. Oh, this was just on the fingertips. Here comes the shot and a pass on number one. Ah, that was a really nice shot of the number one of the Spanish team. Nuria Canas. And it gives the first goal for the Spanish team this game. It was a good start of the Spanish team. First, first three attacks. Few good opportunities. Finally, they made a goal. Let's see how the Dutch are responding to this. Here comes the attack on the right side of the pitch. Number seven goes for herself. So this sees some opportunities to Divicia. Divicia, she's not going to go for the goal. She decided to go the ball outside. Don't take any risk. Number eight has some trouble to find her pedal. And the number two of the Spanish team does not let her in. Dutch team is waiting. That everybody has a pedal, but time goes further and only 10 seconds on the shot clock. Dutch team loses the ball. It's now for the Spanish team. Number two goes for the fast break, dribbles. Dutch team is already there in defense line. Only number six, the captain is a little bit slow back. And the Spanish team is waiting to, to, until they are all in position. Dutch team is fighting real hard now with those two center girls in the middle. Makes it a little bit more difficult to hold your position. You need to choose every time for the, especially for the center defender. Spanish team is searching for some opportunities and now there's coming a little bit more pressure of the Dutch team. Ball goes all the way back with uh, 40 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Another time pressure on the ball. Number two can go through with a little bit of speed. Passes back to number five, but she misses the ball. Two seconds on the clock, shot lead to be now. No, it was a little bit too late, no goal. She was just too late. Half second too late, I think. Here goes the fast break from the Dutch. There's an opportunity on the right side. Opportunity still there. Here comes a shot or the pass. Dirichi Bok was not really paying attention to the pass. And the Dutch team needs to start all over for the attack with 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Ooh, that was a little bit too difficult from the captain. And this is not what you want to have. Too easy to give the ball to the opponent. And in Canoe Polo, it's so easy to score a fast break. Dutch team is going five out now. I think that's a good decision because the, the Spanish team is in the beginning of the, of the second half. A lot of opportunities. And with this, it will be a little bit more difficult. 
Dutch team did it as well against the Polish in previous match and that resulted in like four times they get position of the ball just like now. Referee had some troubles to find out who touched the ball the latest before it went out of the pitch. <coughs> Four and a half minutes remaining on the game. Netherlands is leading with three against Spain, against one. A lot of pressure on the ball here. The Dutch team pushed the Spanish team all the way back to their own half. Spanish team is looking for passing and a nice distance shot. Oh, it just hit the bottom of the bar. This Spanish team is not lucky at all at this moment. It was a nice fast shot of the Spanish team. And here we go with possession of the Dutch team with four minutes remaining in this game. Spanish team still still takes their time, falling back in a 1-3-1 one, one position. Dutch team are waiting on the shot clock. He goes here for the first attack. And another distance shot for Merlin Vessels. Luckily it's a corner for the Dutch team. Dutch team really needs to be more careful with their opportunities. Because they only have two goals in front. Here goes number five, easy. She passed the ball to number eight. Nice defense of the Spanish team. Ah, this was not lucky at all. She touches the goalkeeper again. Previous game from the Poland team against the Netherlands. Five falls when they hit the goalkeeper. Here comes the fast break of the Spanish team. But a nice save of number eight. Ah, referee thinks this was not according to the rules. And gives it a green card to number eight of the Dutch team, Divertje Bink. Spanish team is in ball position with three minutes on the clock. Two goals behind the Dutch team. Spanish team really needs to make a goal now if they want to win this game. Here comes the pressure again from the Dutch team. Teammates of the number nine. Got a little bit of help there. Here comes the number nine again. Shots on the goal but misses again. Number 9 already scored 7 goals so far this tournament. Ball's in possession of the Dutch. A little bit of tricky shot there. They wanted to do a nice substitution there. But the Spanish number 8, Marandrua, she saw it coming through. And this gives the, the Spanish team an opportunity to make a goal. Dutch team looks a little bit nervous now. Spanish team there goes for the pass to the center. And another distance shot. Oh, that was just saved. It was hit by a Dutch pedal and it went all the way to the other side of the goal. Spanish team is not lucky at all. Two minutes on the clock. Spanish team goes five out. Because they need to have this ball in their own hands. Nice battle there. Referee saw some obstruction. Reset of the shot clock. One minute, 30 seconds remaining on the normal clock. Here goes Sarissa. Number one is with her back. Look at that. The Dutch girls are all free. So the Dutch team now has two opportunities or they need to make a shot and in 40 seconds or the Spanish team needs to make a fall so that we can uh, reset of the shot clock. That team stays so far, just in ball position. Here goes number four, Marika. She's total free, balls goes there. She's what? only a free goal. Oh, she missed the, hits the bar. Too much pressure of the number one of Spain there. 50 seconds on the clock. Another obstruction foul for number eight. This will be a yellow card because this is a fall. I 
I think the ref needs to give a yellow card because the rule is that if it is a green card in the last minute, it will be a yellow card. The Spanish crowd goes crazy. Talking to the referees because the Spanish team wants to have a yellow card. Here comes the yellow card for the Dutch team. With 48 seconds remaining on the clock. The Dutch are now with four. Spanish team is with five. This gives the Spanish team a little bit more space in the defense line of the Dutch team. Dutch team needs to pedal real hard now. Here comes the shot on number two and a nice save of the goalkeeper number seven. Sarissa van Veenendaal. Spanish team really need to rush now. 27 seconds on the clock. Go fast for the corner. They need two more goals to win or to draw this game. Number seven goes there, but good pressure of the defense line there. Number two is going, no, number nine now needs to shut this. Yeah, but nice save of the Dutch girl, Alicia van der Berg. Four seconds remaining on the clock. And it's game over. The Dutch win again in their group with three goals for the Netherlands and one for Spain. So we got now in a group, we got the Netherlands played three games. They won three. three. The Spanish team played three games and only one had, to, had a chance to win one game and loses two. So the Dutch team is now in favor to go for the semi-finals. So we will be with you shortly with a game protocol. Poland's men under 21 and they play for the places seven or eight. So the winner of this game will be seven of the tournament and the loser will be the number eight. Thank you. 
I'm here with Sietse van der Swan, the coach for the Dutch ladies team. Another win for the Dutch team. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> it was a nice first half, especially the last 20 seconds of the first half. Scored two goals in, the, in 20 seconds. A lot of pressure there for the Dutch team. But the second half was a little bit uh, nervous. Yeah, nervous and messy. Uh, we were very happy we got the three goals in the first half to give us a bit of a comfortable lead but then we started messing up things started to get you know too nervous too rushed too sloppy and then things got really hectic and we we're lucky to get away with the win but could have been uh could have been better yeah and here i think you shouted a lot because your voice uh, is going to disappear a little bit <laughs> how many games you have left now uh well if we're lucky we have four left uh two uh no it's not, not even true five i think one more tomorrow morning and then three more if we make it to the semi-finals uh, but yeah, I can relax next week when I'm back at work. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and uh, good luck for the next games. Thank you very much.
E estamos a poucos instantes do início da partida Portugal-Polónia. Jogo da categoria de sub-21 masculino que vai decidir o sétimo e o oitavo classificado deste campeonato da Europa de Caia Futebol Coimbra 2019. As equipas já se defrontaram neste europeu. Uh, o jogo que acabou empatado a três gols. Welcome to the game number 354 of this European Championship in Coimbra. Portugal against Poland, man under 21. And they are playing for place number 7 or 8. So the final ranking, this is the last game of their European Championship. And we have the home team. Portugal, of course, with number 1, David Silva. Number two, Diogo Pereira. Number three, Daniel Francisco. Number four, Jao Matos. Number five, Jose Ribeiro. Number six, Tiago Ribeiro. Number seven, Jao Gomez. Number eight, Francisco Correa. Number nine, Afonso Ramos. And number 10, Francisco Cruz. And for Poland, we got only seven players. We got with number one, Simon Kalisek. Number two, Jan Gulari. Number three, uh, Marcia Rosiak. Number four, Bartos Baranski. Number five, Jakob Olek. Number six, Alexi Kuyava. And number seven, Filip Jasuikwicz. Teams are preparing for the last game. Portuguese team is supporting their team now. And in the meantime, I want to give a little bit of thanks to the Coimbra City Council, the University of Coimbra, the club Fluvio de Coimbra, it's the local canoe club, who does a tremendous job for hosting this event. We got Yagos Santa Casa, Yupin Sports, it's the supplier of the goals for the competition, also known as CPS. And we got the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth. At the same time, on pitch number one, there's a game from the Netherlands against France, and they play for place number five and six. So it all give you a lot of joy for this game. Should be a nice one. Portuguese team was doing their anthem. Poland took off their helmets as a respect. Very nice to see you with these young guys. Teams are lining up. 
Have fun by watching this game, everybody. Also, the Polish team is now giving the anthem. And here we go for the last game for these teams in this European Championship. And we're off. And this was a nice far sprint. The number eight came up to the body of the number two. It's not allowed. Shaking hands. This will be a nice supporting game. For the Poland under 21 men, this is way, way better than they all did before. Best result in the European Championship was ninth, and that was in 2007. Last European Championship in 2017, the, they became 14th. And now they can play for place number seven and eight. Poland's got the ball, they're in the attack mode. Ball goes to number six on the right side. Tries to give a pass to number seven, but it was nice defense of the Portuguese defense team. Here goes number two with a long distance shot. What a fast and hard shot. This is a beautiful shot. Nice start of this game. Goal by number two, Jan Bilarki. This is his fourth goal of this tournament. Portuguese team now wants to give an answer to that goal of Poland. With two players of the Portuguese team in the center. I'm trying to give a little bit more space in the defense line of the Polish team. Half minute on the shot clock. And here goes number eight, but it was nice defense on number three. With his own boat, he turned the boat of number eight, so he was not in scoring position anymore. Number eight is trouble, get his pedal, but fair play by number three of Poland to give his pedal. Portuguese team immediately goes on the left side, but nice block from number three of Poland. Nice battle for the ball up there. Portuguese team still keeping possession of the ball. This will be an excitement game to watch. Teams are pretty equal to each other. And all win to win their last game of this European Championship. On the right side is a little bit space at number 10. Yeah, he goes for the shot. And this was a very nice shot. He tricked the goalkeeper with this because he thought it was be a hard, fast shot, but he just made it a fake shot. So it was a really slow shot. And the pal of the goalkeeper was already uh, below the goal. And then the ball just dropped in. A really nice shot. This number 10 to keep your head that cool underneath the goal. Francisco Cruz already scored three goals. He now has as well as the number four, Diogo, scored four goals during this tournament. Uh, this was corner for the Poland team. Here goes Poland again. Ball goes all the way to the other side of the pitch. Number six is going there. Try to give the ball to number seven. Number seven throws a nice way through the defense line. And for number three, number ten comes up and nice shot. This was a really nice attack. All the Portuguese team was trying to block the ball with their pedal. And at that time, the Polish team came up with speed. Nice attack of this young under 21 Polish team. Here goes Poland again. Another pass to number six. He goes a little. Uh, oh, this was a little bit too uh, much to the back of the number seven of Poland. And here goes the fast break. It's three against two. Uh, this ball is a little bit too far away, but luckily number two is still there. Number two against number two. Oh, and he scores! Number two makes a nice goal. 
the number two of Portugal, Diogo Pereira, made his fifth, made his fifth goal of the tournament. So with six minutes, we have played this first game. No, sorry, four and a half minutes played. Portugal's leading, two goals, and Poland won. Here goes number five on the left side. Go to number two. Number four goes to number five. He's going for the shot. No, don't risk anything. You don't want to lose the ball again. A lot of movement now with the Polish team. And this will be a shot. He's waiting and waiting. No, he doesn't see any hole in the defense line. Ball goes back. 80 seconds on the shot clock. Portugal's keep the whole defense line really tight. Nice speed of number two. And a little bit of obstruction over there from the Portuguese number three. Timeout gives by the referee. The ball needs to be placed in position. Here he goes, he goes for the shot. Oh, I think this can be a penalty. Referee did not decide to give it a penalty there. Pedal was way too close to the hands of the Polish shooter. And a nice shot of number four all of a sudden. Goalkeeper was a little bit surprised by this shot. The number four of Poland made his first goal of this tournament, Bartos Baranski. Four minutes remaining in the first half. Two goals for Portugal and two for Poland. Nice pass to the center, but nice defending of the number seven. Oh, what's going on there underneath? This is not fair play of the number six of Portugal. Nice long pass out there, but it just bounces be uh, behind the goal. I'm wondering if the referee are going to give a green card to number six of Portugal, but they decide to let it go. Nice piece of defending just a minute ago by the number seven of Poland. The the captain of the team, Filip Yasugi, he just keep pedaling, pedaling, pedaling until the attacker fell on his boat and that's not allowed. <laughs> Poland is now playing in a 1-2-2 defense. To give a little bit more pressure on the ball. Nice send. Nice screen on the left side, number eight's go for the pass, but again the number seven of the Polish defense saw what's coming. A lot of heart, Pelling and a nice pass to number eight, and he just missed it by the bar. This was a nice tag, really fast passing. They just went all the way through the team of Poland, the defense line was all the way gone. Polish team is now again in position of the ball. Two and a half minutes remaining on the clock. 40 on the shot clock. Teams are checking on the score. A little bit of struggling there with the number three. And likes to Needs to find a hole there. Pass to number five. And a nice distance shot. All the way there. Number five, Jakub Oleg scored a really nice distance shot. He put all his energy in, even toggled while he was shooting. Three goals scored for Poland, two for Portugal, with two minutes remaining on the clock. It's a nice first half to watch. Already scored five goals. Two minutes remaining on the clock. Portugal are going for the next attack wave. 
And again on the left side, there's a little bit of space. Can he make the pass to number eight? Yes, there comes number eight. And that was a nice shot, but blocked by defender number one of Poland, Simon Kalisek. The Portuguese number eight, Francesco Correra. He really wants to make another goal. One minute 20 on the normal clock, 50 seconds now on the shot clock. Portuguese team are waiting a little bit longer until they see the right opportunity to go for the offense. Poland is there in the defense line, 1-2-2. Two, two. First two defenders are really close to the goalkeeper to help the goalkeeper for any shot on the goal. And the first two are trying to take all the fast guys coming through. See here, immediately pressure on the ball. Really nice pass to number three, and he almost made a goal. Nice pass over the water. I would like to see this in a replay. Forty-five seconds remaining. The normal clock is a little bit behind the clock you see on your screen. It's now thirty-four seconds. Portugal is waiting. They only will do one attack. Try to try to come in the halftime break with three three. Number nine is now going for a little bit more space there. Here comes the Portuguese team on the right side. There's a lot of space up there, but the pass was a little bit too high. Bob session for the Polish team with 10 seconds on the clock. Here they go. Fast break up there. Number two gives the ball. No, he scores him. He wanted to score himself. This was a little bit stupid and a little bit selfish of the number two of Poland, Jan Bilari. He had five more seconds. He could do another dribble to get closer to the goal or he needed to pass the ball. But this was not the right decision to do. So we're half time there. Three goals scored by Poland and two by Portugal. This is the last day for the under 21 teams, the men and the women. The senior teams, women and men are going further with the tournament on Sunday. So late this afternoon we will have the finals and the medal ceremony as well. So now we go for all the rankings. And at the end of the day, all the under-21 teams are done for the European Championship. Then they can prepare for next year, the World Championship in Rome. Second half will start 
shortly. Portuguese team is ready, waiting on the Polish team now. And we will start the last half of this tournament for Poland against Portugal. And the Portuguese guy number nine, Afonso Ramos, was way faster than a Poland team. Portugal is going with a new tactic. The two guys inside. Nice defending skills there with his pedal for number six from Poland. Fifty seconds remaining on the shot clock. Nice pass on number ten. And number ten does a shot, but he missed completely. Francisco Cruz did not manage to make a goal. Poland in well position. First minute of the second half is there. Poland is still leading with one more goal. Here goes the attack on the left side starting, goes to the number seven all the way on the other side. Nice screening of number six, but the chaser number two from the protocol was there just on time to stop this attack. Again on the right side and this time it will be a nice shot under. It was a nice low shot, but it just hit the bar. Number seven target was hit by a Portuguese and here goes the fast break. Nice pass to the center for number ten. And he's going for the shot, but already the defender, number two of Poland, stopped the ball, Jan Bilari. I think the Portuguese guy needs to be a little bit more to the right, and he had a nice screen from his teammate, but he did not use this screening. Portuguese team still in ball possession. They take it slow, they're a little bit patient. Ball goes all the way to the other side. Nice piece of defending there by the number three of Poland and the number nine just let the ball slip through his hands. Gave it right away to the Poland team and here comes the fast break. Number six was going for an open goal but the pass could not make it. <laughs> Number three got the ball through his head, was not paying attention. Team of Poland are taking their time. Looking for that good opportunities. 30 seconds on the shot clock. This time they start on the right side. Center can pass to the... Oh, that was almost a nice pass. Get it back to his hands. And with two, are, with two hands he tried to surprise the Portuguese defending team. In the meantime, on the pitch number one, it's two for the Netherlands and two for France. And they play for, no, for ranking number five and six. Referee thinks there was a little bit of obstruction there. Portuguese team is there, but it was nice. Pedal defending of number two. He's going for the shot. Oh, he just hits the bar. This was a really nice piece of the number two of Poland. He almost made his fault okay by scoring the goal. But he was not lucky this time. Also for the Portuguese team, this will be one of the best results since any European championship. 
The best results they had with under 21 men was in 2007, number nine. Ah, a nice save by the goalkeeper, number four of Poland. Bartos Baranski. Last year during the Europe during the World Championship, the Polish team ended up for the bronze and they came for the bronze medal, but they lost the last game and ended up fourth. The European Championship before they ended up eighth. And as it looks now, they're going for the seventh place. But we got still five and a half minutes left on the clock. Portuguese team are searching for some hole, but again, the number five, the defense team of Poland, touched the ball a little bit with his pedal. And a nice shot of number 10, but again, a nice save of the Polish goalkeeper. Poland takes their time. Five minutes remaining. Captain is instructing their team what to do, how they will set up their attack. Ball goes to the captain. Passes back to number two. Number two goes to number five. A little bit too far away. And it slows down the whole attack. Attack needs to be done all over with only 17 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Here comes the number two with a nice pass to number five. Number five goes for that shot. But nice save by the Portuguese defending team. What results in a corner for the Poland. Four minutes remaining on the clock. Well, goes to number two. Two pass to number seven. Captain is a little bit patient. He wants to have an attack real nice. There's a little bit of opening there on the right side. And the number five sees it and shots, but he just missed the goal by inches. Portico's team now going to attack. A little bit of obstruction there on the right side between number two and number six. six. Referee thinks it's still okay. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Portico really needs to make a goal now. Nice pass to the center. Good defense again by the Poland team, but Murphy think this is a foul. Green card for the Poland team. Poland team now has two green card. Here's come the shot from number one. And nice pass to number nine. Poland still in ball possession, another shot. And Portugal still in possession of the ball. Unbelievable what's going on there. Three minutes remaining on the clock. Portugal really had some good opportunities there, but they really need to make that goal now. Uh, here goes on the left side to the attack. Nice pass to number one. And I think this... It is a corner. Portugal's team were... Shouting for a penalty. Pedal was really close to the hands. Well, it was making the shot. Green card for number six from the Portuguese team. Two minutes 40 on the clock. Number one of Portugal, David Silva, searching for his position. And shot, but blocked again by the goalkeeper. Two and a half minutes remaining on the clock. Portuguese team is now rushing to make that goal.
Number 10 passes to the left side. Sees if there's an opportunity. Ball goes back. Portuguese team is really looking for an opportunity. But the strong Poland guys are defending really good. They will not give any space away in their defense team. Now on the right side, there's a little bit of screening. Balls go way too far above the number 10. Number one is pressing and pressing, tries to get a ball out of the pitch. Nice pass under pressure of number 10. And again, back to number nine. But the defense line of Poland is organized again. It was a difficult shot to make. Nice combat for the ball there. One half minute remaining. Here comes Portugal again. He's going for the pass to the right. Taking their time, they really don't want to risk that ball. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Portugal is waiting for a good opportunity. And I think there will be one on the right side there with number 10. But number two of the Poland team saw what's going on. Another combat there, a lot of pressure on the ball now. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Number nine is going for the pass again to number 10. And the shot and he scores. This was a really nice goal from number 10 from Portugal. His second goal of this game, Francisco Cruz. What brings the game three against three? If this game stays a draw, we are going to for the golden goal. Twenty-five seconds. Portugal defense line is really strong now. Don't let any space for the Poland team. Poland team goes for the attack now with number two. He goes through, he goes through, and he shots, and he scores! With only 12 seconds remaining on the clock, Poland team scores with number two. Jan Bilari, he scored now his second goal also of this game. Portugal's going for the long distance shot, number seven, the captain saw what's going on. Portugal still in ball position, ball goes to number 10, 10 goes for the long distance shot, but he missed. And it's game over. Just the last 10 seconds, this game is decided in the favor of Poland. Four goals for Poland, three for Portugal. And that means that Poland ended up seventh and Portugal ended up eighth in this European Championship. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We will back to you within a few more minutes. Players are thanking their supporters. Poland team even says thanks to the Portuguese team for hosting this great event. Next game will be Denmark, Great Britain, men under 21.
Jogo vai ocorrer as equipas de Dinamarca contra a Grã-Bretanha.
the game programmed here is the Denmark Great Britain men's under 21 game here on pitch two due to start at 15.10. Commentary to be brought to you live from our team. And here we are, the Denmark team coming through. The name check them, Asmus Brandt. Number two, Jakob Sawyer. Andreas Christiansen. Number four, Cole Fossmark. Number five, Matthias Andersen. Number six, Frederick Thielgaard. Number seven, Magnus Peterson. And number eight, Niels Torberg. The Great Britain under 21 men's team. Number one, Edward Lart. Number two, Finn Kane. Number three, Chris Underwood. Number four, Luke Meadows. Number five, Henry Clark. Number six, Liam Webb. Number seven, Ben Muller. And number one, Santam, number eight, Santam McCutcheon. So we can see the teams there. Preparing on our screen now, the Great Britain team taking final drinks on board. Coach Andy Lowthorpe, currently first in the last World Championships, Great Britain, and first at the last European Championships. In this under-21 category, though, the entire team has changed since the European Championships in 2017. This is effectively a new team. Great Britain very fortunate to have had three championship titles, two worlds, one Europeans. That team aging out, this team replacing them. A lot to live up to, had a difficult championship so far. The captains exchanging gifts as is traditional in canoe polo. Just to give some history here, the men's under-21 team in Denmark were 10th in Welland, 10th in Sanomé and 10th in Syracuse. These teams here playing off for 11th and 12th place. I hope they won't mind me saying I'm sure this is not what either of them hoped for, but this is pride. This is their last game of the competition. These two proud nations will hope to bring this game home. And the charge start underway. 20 minutes. Who wants to go home on a win? Both teams. Chris Underwood there getting the first ball for Great Britain. A little sigh of relief. Hands on the ball. Everybody can relax. Move forwards. Settle a defence. Danes typically very strong defensively. Very fast breaking team. GB light away. More mobile. So the two styles of play, how will they stack up? That's a huge shot, but unfortunately, high and wide. GB team hoping to get a corner out of that, but I don't think so. Chris Underwood appealing to the referee, nothing doing. 
This team coming back. Ball being dribbled up the pitch. Very similarly identified these teams. Both teams with red boats and white helmets. So the distinguishing feature, the buoyancy vests and lycra tops. The Danes with red buoyancy vests and white lycra tops. GB with blue buoyancy vests and dark, very dark, almost black buoyancy vests. A little unlucky there. Chris Underwood again fighting for the ball. Been pinged by the referee for an illegal tackle. Holding a fence, caught the arm of his opponent. Frustrating, but no, doesn't draw a green card, so he can be relieved about that. And here we go, this on this white shirt, you can see the amount of work going on in the defence. Dane's looking for a gap in the GB defence. Half a chance there, skied over the top. Peterson for Denmark, a big arm on him. Needs to bring that down the other side of the bar and a very good chance of scoring. Super, super shot and a corner ball. Corner resets the shot clock, of course. Full minute to go. Denmark patient at this stage. All, all both teams obviously feeling this out. This is a placing game, as I mentioned before. The placings being 11th and 12th, that really does not matter. This, every game that is a placing game will be contested as if it's a final. And this is a fantastic breaking opportunity for GB. Chris Underwood on one side, Liam Webb on the other. How's this going to play out? Oh, Chris Underwood has a man to pass to, but backs himself. Teal guarding goal for Denmark. Did not have a chance with that. He'd covered back, covered the ground well, got himself into goal. But Underwood shot just blasting into the back of the net. So, first blood to GB. 1-0 their lead after two and a half minutes. Denmark, how will they regroup? How will they deal with that? They have to wait. They don't want to do anything stupid. Very often, particularly under-21's category, a poor option now, and they'll be two down. They need to settle the game. Plenty of time left on the clock. No reason to panic. They just need to make sure they don't concede another goal. Now they're up this end, they need to try and be steady. Next option for them needs to be goal. That's a shot down for a corner, they can live with that. GB defence, very strong here. The work rate going on in front of there. The big players, eight for Denmark, pitted up against five for GB. Thorberg, Clark, battling together. Who can get dominance? Who can create a gap? On that occasion, Thorberg created a gap. His teammate came down inside, field guard, but no joy. Goalkeeping duties falling at to Luke Meadows, up to the task. They can't allow him to have to make too many one-on-one -on -one saves. A good goalkeeper will make a lot of one-on-one -on -one saves, but they will not make them all. You have to give them a bit more protection. His defenders all know that. On the other side, we'll name check them. Christensen for Denmark, working t nose to nose with Edward Lark for GB. Just an ongoing battle. Those big unit men expect you to just work the full 20 minutes if they're asked. Very hard at senior level, very hard at this level. But those guys will just keep burning those biceps until they get some space for their team. For the attacking team, they want space for a man to slip inside. For the defensive team, they want to drive it out and give their goalkeeper a chance to see the shot coming. Here we go again. What's happening here? Oh, that superb front man play. Once again, that's Underwood. Got his boat between his opponent and the ball. Now he's gone. Look at this. He's loving that. He's there. He's there. He's there. Oh, it's wide. It's wide because he was fouled. This is going to hurt the Danish team because not only is this going to be an open goal penalty, they're going to lose a man for two minutes. The ball gone off the back line. The clock's been stopped. The referees have got something to talk about. From my angle, I'm not sure what. A quick discussion. But now with the new rules... A penalty that's conceded on an open goal will be an uncontested penalty. The player who was fouled will take it. That will be Underwood. 
A Danes will go down to five. I really can't see any other outcome of this discussion. Um, the, Underwood was the, the defending sim player was behind Underwood. It was clearly an open goal. Let's see. I suspect that will be the call. I have been wrong before, but uh, hopefully not on this occasion. Fairly sure for me, unless it's not a penalty and the referees have seen it differently. They're giving the yellow card. That's going to be the penalty. Yes, that's going to be a yellow card. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be an open goal penalty. Yep, it is. And so Underwood takes a four-metre penalty. It's an open goal. He'd like to... Jakob Soya, the player who made the foul. So he goes off. And Underwood, four metres out. In training, he would bag 100 out of 100 of these. But it's always different in a game situation. But this is going to hurt the Danes, not so much because of the penalty, but because their player remains off the pitch for the full two minutes, irrespective of whether a goal is scored. This is not a power play penalty. Uh, it's not a power play yellow card. It's an open goal penalty. Now, Underwood does the first part. GB lead by two goals to nil. 5.28 on the clock. So, two minutes. Denmark will be obliged to play for two full minutes down to about the three and a half minute mark with just four players. How are GB going to tackle this? Not surprisingly, pressing man for man with four of their players and then sitting under the goal, we've got Luke Meadows watching on. Doesn't need to join in. They've got a lead. This is burning energy for those front men. Under pressure, draining to be rolling. That's a shot. Can he find someone? That's great play from the Danes. Certainly not dead here. That is good work. Phenomenal effort from them to get the ball forwards. They're going to have to keep an eye on the shot clock. There's 15 seconds on the shot clock. Nine. Seven. Five on the shot clock. That resets it, and that's out for a corner. The referees have given that as a goal throw, and that's a fast break for GB. That's fawning for Tanner McCutcheon, and he backs himself to bag it from long range. And why wouldn't you? When you've got an arm like that and a pedigree like the McCutcheon family, a shot from the halfway line is nothing. The pedigree I refer to. Tanner McCutcheon there for the under-21s. Three brothers of his playing in the senior men's team for Great Britain. An outstanding achievement from the family. Three goals to nil. GB team finding the vein of form that I'm pretty sure they wish they'd found earlier. This Danish team unlucky to be battling on with four. Still 30-odd seconds remaining of the send-off period. 30 seconds on the shot clock. So how's this going to play out? There's still an opportunity for more. Underwood stole the ball and scored before, or stole the ball and earned a penalty before. Can he do it again? Pressure's on. Pressure's on the Danes, and boy, are they feeling it. 20 seconds on the shot clock. GB coming back in, and the Danes back to five. So, game is back on, but they're three down. How's this going? Great work. Oh, illegal push. That's lot. Referee judging that to be on the front. And as a foul. Danes trying to build something. This is a tight, this is a placing game, so no goal difference issue here, really. It's win-lose, or if it's tight, it will go to golden goal. At the moment, GB with a three-goal lead. So the Danes are going to have to roll the dice at some time because much as they don't want to go down to a heavy defeat to finish, they've really got nothing to lose. They may as well try everything. They're passing inside some love. That is quality. That is absolute quality. No doubt about it. Asmus Brandt, they work the ball inside. Confident and finish. 3-1. Is this the start of a comeback? It certainly gives them something to build on. GB should be confident. They've got that two-goal buffer now.
but suddenly just maybe that little doubt creeps in. Go to the other end, score, that'll settle it. But at the moment, that just gives the Danes that little window of hope. GB would like to turn the screw and snuff out the flame. Was that a pass or a shot? I'm not sure what that was. The ball seemed to drift across the Danish defence. They've said thank you very much. Picked it up and moving forwards. Here we go. Long high ball. GB subbing. Webb goes off. Meadows back on under the goal. He's had a good start to the game. He'll be hoping to keep that up, but back out with goalkeepers. Confidence, everything really. A confident goalkeeper is a useful tool in this game. Denmark moving the ball around, but losing ground. 25 seconds on the shot clock, and they're back out almost to the halfway line. That's great defence from GB. Six, 15 on the shot clock. Denmark looking very cool here, but I can't help thinking if they might not be looking too cool. Oh, this is great defence. Underwood, that's twice he's done that. Once for the penalty and now again. Can they get some product out of it? Oh, it's an optimistic pass. So off in the way, but oh, now you can't follow the root rate of Clark there. Come on, let's get something out of this. No. Nope. Again, players, individual skills here sometimes have been just stunning. In the end, that play was decided by Tyus Anderson. S absolutely bailed out his team. That should have really been a goal on a plate for GB. And Matthias Anderson has just made a block that's put it out for a corner and they're all back set defence. Great play from him. Great play from Underwood to win the ball. Not such great play to lose it again. And then between the teams sweeping up. Some great skills, and as we learnt to love about under-21 polo, men and women, a little bit less steady, a little bit less predictable than perhaps the senior game. Great fun. GB, shot clock and game clock, both on 24 seconds. GB, happy to run it down and work one chance here. They'll take their lead into half-time. If they can get one more, so much the better. That's a clumsy foul. A little bit of holding, 10 sec 12 seconds left. Can Denmark get one back? If they went in at 3-2, they would be very happy given the pattern of this half. GB need to snuff this out. And that's, oh, that's a foul. Now, referee had called time. He's given a green card for number two. It's not clear to me or the players what's happening. Some confusion. I do believe it's half time. Yes, the referee signaling it's half time just to clear it up. So, green card for Jakub Sawyer. He was off the pitch before, so that's interesting. And as we take a look at the beautiful University of Coimbra, and back we have the bridge, Coimbra University, the oldest in Portugal. Some people enjoying swimming in the Mondego River. I'm not sure if they're canoe polo people or just the locals enjoying a swim in the heat. It's been quite a cool day today, but the clouds burned off. We have beautiful blue skies above us. And here we have the match stats. And I think pretty much story of the half. Well, unusually, Denmark have had more shots, more shots on target. They've had more cards and more possession, but... That possession that GB have had, the 37%, has resulted in three goals. That is the story of those breaks. Underwood, for me, the MVP, but quite close. Meadows in goals, done his piece. To be fair, a good all-round performance. And I'm guessing from a coaching point of view, if you get good performances out of the entire team, that's what really counts. And those good performances across the board give Great Britain a lead of three goals to one. Denmark have had some superb shots, some great bits of firefighting and the majority of their possession. They have to find a way, if they're coming back into this game, of cracking the GB defence. So far, the one chance they made or the one goal they scored was a superb inside pass, found the back of the net. But they've had a player sent off, that gives you an uphill struggle for the half. They've weathered it well. Will it hurt them late on in the game? It remains to be seen. But this game for Team 11th and 12th in the under-21s category, the last game of the week for these two teams, neither team wants to go home on a loss. Just looking down the team list here, 
the birthdays of this team. Majority of the GB team bought, born in this millennium, so young, young teams. Some of the Danish team, 99, 98, I see. So this team will be aging out and hoping to move up to seniors next year. Last few seconds of the half, coaches giving their final instructions, taking on water. I just remind you, both teams have red boats and white helmets. The Denmark team have red buoyancy vests and white rash vests. The GB team have blue buoyancy vests and almost black lycra rash vests. The teams are lined up. The pitch looks beautiful. The city looks beautiful. I'm sure up close the teams look beautiful. Let's be ready. Great Britain under 21 men versus Denmark under 21 men for 11th or 12th place in this under 21 competition. And here we go. Underwood goes to the ball. But up against Brandt, Asmus Brandt. Underwood takes the foul. Brandt concedes a green card. Denmark are going to have to start to be careful. They've amassed two green cards. If you have a third, it really does tie your hands a little bit as a team because a fourth green card offence is automatically a yellow card. Someone gets sent off. Oh, this... Now, the body language for me, I'm a big believer. It says everything. The way this Great Britain team is moving now. Coach has given them confidence at half-time. The scoreline's given them some confidence. And one of these under-21 teams playing with confidence is a very dangerous weapon. Denmark have to find the confidence themselves. They have to turn the game. I think just one goal would do it because they brought it to 3-2. The belief levels would rise and they're certainly very capable paddlers. But they need something to just give them that little bit of self-belief. Tanner McCutcheon piling forwards, looking. Yes, no rush. 30 seconds on the shot clock. GB team happy to run some time down. Two goal lead, not a lot in canoe polo at this gauge, but a two goal lead when it comes to the last minute or two is very, very strong. Here we are. Again, GB will be very happy to camp up this end of the pitch. Taking and defending corners. The clock will become their friend once it ticks down a little, but still with eight and a half minutes to go. Two goal lead, not really enough. They're looking confident and cool, but that's, the re that's a little bit casual. Casual pass, casual result. That brings Denmark on the break. This is their trademark, really, I would say. Fast breaking play. They've got three men forward, a fourth man backing them up. This is typical of the Danes. Oh, and that's that two goal lead, just giving a hint of desperation. Could have gone further, I think. Got closer, but it's still brought down for a corner. So they reset the shot clock. They keep their foot on the gas. They really need one goal. will give the Danes a toehold in this. They're a big, strong, confident nation. If they get this to game to one, anything could happen. And they will know that. Here we go. Moving forwards. Steady ball passing around. Very confident, very comfortable. They're relying on their skills and hoping there's enough time on the clock. I think they should be hurrying up a little bit more, but they seem comfy here. They really want the one goal. I don't want to curse anything, but I really think if Denmark score here, you'll see a, a change in the tempo, a change in their self-belief, and that's what they need right now. A goal here, and they, they will just pick up the pace. They'll believe in themselves. Is this it? That's nicely worked. Oh... Peterson over the top and a goal line throw. Now they're dropping away. We will see a press from the Danes at some point. Seven minutes, not their moment to choose. They're happy to think that the shot clock will give them the ball back or that GB will make a mistake. I think they're back in the wrong horse there. I think GB will get the pressure on here. Henry Clark. GB captain brings in, threatens in, but 40 seconds on the shot clock. And now that's the long high ball. That's Finn Kane. That's what the Danes are hoping for. That's the tactic they're playing. 
They want to wait for GB to give them the ball back and GB have done just that. And again, same message from me, same message from the coach. They need to be sure that the next thing that happens at that end of the pitch for the Danes is a goal for them. At 3-2, they'll be right in this game. At the moment, the GB team in the driving seat. Can Denmark do it here? And a foul that resets the shot clock. That's a small advantage to Denmark, but really as we come into the six minutes remaining or under six minutes remaining, they need that goal that gives them hope now. They can't expect to score quick goals here, but they are very capable of scoring two goals in the six minutes that remain. Back and forth, they're scrubbing some seconds off the shot clock again. I hope the coach is happy with that. For me, they need to press this. That's a shot now for a corner. It keeps things ticking over, but it's still not the goal they really want. Players working hard in the defence. This is the last five minutes of their championships. Digging in, last reserves of strength. They'll know they've been here for three days. They know those biceps are burning. But here we come. Is this the move that starts it all for them? Bram brings the ball forwards across. Inside to Tilgard. Can he find something? Too patient for me here at Denmark. They need to step this up. The GB team will take time off the clock when they get chance. Into the side netting. Being applauded by the GB coaches. It's not over yet, but as the clock comes under five minutes, that clock is the friend of the GB team. Denmark, now they're talking about it. They're thinking about it. Are they going to press? Nope. Five. Yes, they're, oh, they're trying to communicate this. It's not been... They've still got a keeper and he's coming out. This is risky. The indecision now can hurt them. They've settled to keep a keeper in. I think they were trying to get out and couldn't do it cleanly. So they've had to opt for the slightly safer option. GB have realised 30 seconds on the shot clock and they'll be quite happy to lose another 30. Who's going to be the shooter here in this play? Where's the opportunity coming from? 20 seconds on the shot clock. Tanner McCutcheon, cool as ice, looks up. 15 seconds, plenty of time to make something happen. What's the option? There's a plan. That's a shot coming, but it's not a premium quality one. And again, here we have a battle royal. Oh, Tanner McCutcheon wins it. I think Brandt needed it more, but perhaps McCutcheon wanted it more. So GB get the ball, a free shot, and importantly for them, a shot clock reset. They're going to just scrub time off. They're more than happy to have Denmark watch them passing the ball around. Denmark now a bit unlucky they didn't get that press on at the last opportunity because now GB holding them here and they will take the time off the clock. Yes, discipline very good, recycle the ball, 30 on the clock, looking inside, well recovered. That's good play from Finn Kane. 25, oh, a superb shot and superb save. That is outstanding work, both players. But at the end of the day, Matthias Anderson makes a save onto the bar, down and retains possession. That is what you want of a great goalkeeper. He doesn't just save it. He saves and keeps the ball alive. Now, Denmark. Two and a half minutes. You need two goals. You need the first of them soon. GB will not make it easy for you to get the second. You need to get the first early. Inside passes blocked. Finn Kane again. Now then. Oh, attempts the long bomb forwards and it doesn't make it. Could that be the turning point? This is where games turn if Denmark can score now. But again, close back down. Change of staff by the Denmark team. Tilgard comes off. Christiansen comes on. Is this the five out team? Is this the team that's going to press? One forty-four. GB coaches, GB fans, GB team. Look at that. That clock is their friend now. The more it goes down, the happier they get. Corner ball. Happy for GB. It takes some time. Counts down. 
1.30 on the game clock as Denmark get a reset. And here we go, into play. They really desperately want a goal now if they're going to get anything out of this game. They need to get two goals. Yes, and that's it, and that is it. That could be the turning point. That's Brandt. He worked for it once, he worked for it twice, and he got it in. So, we have 120 on the game clock. The score moves from Great Britain 3 to Denmark 2. All to play for now, and the change of staff again. This must surely be the press team. This must surely be the team that's going to roll the dice now. Denmark have made the changes. Teal got back on. He's had a moment's rest. They're immediately pressing. Ball goes up to Tanner McCutcheon. He's tackled by Torberg. Do not let keep him turned. Torberg keeps him turned. Oh, that attempted steal resets the shot clock. So shot clock and game clock on 50 seconds. Can GB see out 50 seconds? Can they keep working? It's going to be close. It's a one-goal game. But that long pass forward to McCutcheon. And out of the back of his hand, 37 seconds, he restores the two-goal lead. Denmark had to roll the dice. They had to go out and press. And in the end, it's that famous family name of McCutcheon who gets the ball, shells, shoulders off the tackle, backhands it in. Now, 30 seconds, two goals. We all know that's almost impossible. They have to find one, then find the other. This game draws to a close. I'm afraid the wind has gone out of the Danish sails. That effort they put in. They're going to go for the one. They're going to push it. 15 on the shot, 15 on the game. Can they find a goal which will just be a consolation? It's batted out. Not today, thank you all. The ball's still in play. Can GB collect it? That's good work from Underwood. He started fast, he's finished fast. That's good work. And there we are. Full time and a magnificent performance from both teams. Some great skills. But in the end, Great Britain run out winners. Four goals to two. Category there. 11th and 12th. So, GB take 11th place, Denmark 12. Not the result either of these proud Polo nations would have asked for, but that's where they're at. They finish their championships, arms weary. Look at our stats, just tight game. But in the end, all the possession goes with Denmark. But the game score is four goals to two. GB win, take 11th place and go to the bar this evening with a win under their belts there that's superb and again as we would expect I know there's hints of disappointments out there but everybody's shaking hands this is sport this is what we come for this is what we come to see congratulations all around For today, that's the last game we have here on pitch two. All games now played out on pitch one. We have the under-21s finals and third, fourth playoffs. Please switch channel to the live stream on pitch one where we will bring you the rest of today's games. All placing games now, all close, all in the under-21s category. Join us again tomorrow for the senior finishing placings and for the senior finals and medals games. Thank you for joining us here. I urge you, switch to the live stream on pitch one where all the finals in the under-21 category will be taking place. Goodbye.